you guys, do you hear me? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna start in five minutes and just uh, checking if the sound is working or not. Yeah, let's wait uh, like three minutes and I'm gonna start. It's gonna be messy though, like I didn't plan anything. <laughs> I'm just like going yellow right for now. I have like one or two topics I want to talk about, but uh, I think it's gonna be mainly about answering a question after that. So, yeah. Uh, and I uh, like I didn't plan anything, so I'm just gonna yell everything. Loud and clear. I hope it's not too loud though. That's cool. I have to take care of my grandmother in 30 minutes. Yeah, it's okay. Like, yeah, I think uh, the YouTube archives, uh, it's going to work. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Maybe I should record just in case. I don't know. But th there's like a delay uh, with YouTube. I don't know why. Like, there's like a 10 second delay. Like, uh, I don't like, I don't know how to fix that. Maybe it's just YouTube. I don't know. I think it's even like a 20 second uh, delay, like, from, like, uh, yeah. Yo, how should I learn to draw? I'm a beginner. Uh, well, I, I'm gonna answer the, this question uh, after the like the, the little uh, tip session. Your goal is to become yeah, a manga artist. Well, there's a lot of different paths, and uh, I can talk more about it uh, after. Yeah, I try to like uh, to make the the tw the the tips session like uh, as quick as possible. I don't know how long it's gonna last. But yeah, I think it's like one twenty, so I can start now. So um, like in this video, I, I just wanted to tackle like to to talk about um, like how to make like uh, an illustration in general. Like uh, like I have like a lot of questions about like how do I like how do I like make a complex illustration? How do I like lay out the perspective? How do I like, uh, figure out the composition and how I do the colors and everything like uh, with like so much complexity? So uh, I'm just like gonna explain like maybe like I don't know how if, if it's gonna be good, but uh, like like how it works in in my brain. So like the way I work is very easy. It's uh, I, like I'm breaking down everything step by step, and uh, I can break like if there's like four big points, I can break down those. Like, yeah, 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 I can break down those in four, four big points. Four steps. So the first step is the rough. 
And with the rough, it usually, yeah, like it's it's not so much about like drawing skill. It's more about like the like what is my idea with the illustration. So I don't care too much about technique. So it's like figuring out what I want to draw ideas. And uh, and uh, like like laying out the and and just like putting like putting it in uh, on the paper because I found that uh, like you can have the ideas in your head and uh, the thing is that what like when it's in your head is so it's so it's so hazy like you don't know like exactly or like even though it's clear in your head it's better to put it on paper because that's how you figure out. Uh, like how it's gonna work for, for the next step. And usually you never do it when it's in your head. So I always start with, uh, I always start with that. So at least I have like, a, I start something instead of just having a blank canvas. The second one is like a, 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 the, sketch, uh, the sketch phase. And the sketch phase is, uh, is more like um, uh, making the ideas that I that I had uh, with the rough more clear. Like everything has to be more defined. Like when the, the rough the rough part is more for me. Like it, like the the viewer doesn't have to understand what I'm doing with the rough. But the sketch, it's something that if I show it to someone, he will understand what's going on. So it's like cleaning the idea. That's where like I add like volumes, uh, logic, depth, and uh, like yeah, I like adding just physics on it. The thing with rough is like uh, I can go very abstract, so 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 I don't care about the physics. So the, so so that's why I like it because I, I I feel like I'm kind of free. And with the sketch, it's more like putting down more like uh, more limits to you like it's oh actually this idea cannot work with the rough because like uh, the volume doesn't work that way and so it's more like about correcting your ideas to make it work for like other people and uh, number three it's more like uh, i would say like cleaning like uh, like a clean drawing The clean drawing for me is more about uh, the techniques, like fo like focusing like uh, eighty percent on the technique. Uh, it's like uh, mas like uh, like uh, mastering the tool, like focusing on the tool. It's like technique, focus on technique. And uh, and the tool, focus on tool. And you see that, like when, like when, when people like like are have a lot of experience and are getting good, they kind of mix all those three together. And uh, what I found, like I see a lot of people like sketching right away and with no rough, or I see people like 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 doing a clean drawing uh, with like with no sketch as well. And uh, it's because they, they like they like they they know how to draw everything in their head already. And for me, it's like so hard to 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 to, to have everything in my head. That I need those three steps, and it's okay. Like I, I guess with time, maybe I, will, uh, I would be able to draw uh, like from uh, from step three. But I found that like having those three steps makes things way more easier for me, and uh, I don't get tired like uh, as fast as uh, as like some other uh, uh, like yeah. I don't I don't get tired as fast uh, as I should, and uh, and it makes like it helps you like. At least, like, knows where you are going as well. Is there some question? Uh, are you working for Blizzard or just time to time? I'm full time at Blizzard. Do you like to use iPad Pro for art or only Cintiq? Uh, I have the iPad Pro. Uh, I kind of like it, but I never try to do anything serious on it. Uh, Cintiq, I had a lot of issues, and uh, so I'm using your Intuos for now. I love 
your work at symmetral restoration short story. Thank you, professor. Rubbing wrong, like a thumbnail. Yeah, look, the ref could be like a thumbnail, actually. But, but the thing is that, uh, like, you should, yeah, uh, I'm gonna show you after that. Next game, do you have a Discord community? No. I'm not very uh, vocative. I like, uh, usually I don't answer messages and stuff. I'm very bad at that. The sketch phase is when you really focus on 3D for Yes, the sketch phase is like when I focus like a, like trying to put some logic on it. It doesn't have to be 3D. It just has to like for the viewer to understand what it is. Character or item today. It's gonna be a uh, illustration. How much I need to pay attention to details when I'm approaching a deadline. Uh, I can't answer that after. You draw every day. Depends. I have some. Uh, sometimes I draw every day, sometimes I don't draw at all. So I guess it's it's a bad, it's balanced out. Outside of work, yeah, yeah, most of the time. But, like it's like uh, I could draw like 15 hours a day sometimes, and for like two months, and then draw like nothing for two months after. How much reference do you use for your drawing? Yeah, I'm gonna talk about that just right now, actually. But let's go. So like, I, I, at stage one, when I do the rough, usually I never use any reference. It's all about like getting the idea from my brains. So like, uh, I'm gonna show you the the thumbnails I did for for this one. See, like, like I did the like I did like I I like to have like a bunch of like a little square like this to do my thumbnails. And here is the, this is the thumbnails for the for uh, uh, let me show you illustration. Do I have? So yeah, it's the illustration for that. So this is the thumbnails, and you, you can start to see that there's a mix of techniques already because uh, you know with experience, I start to master more of it, like the, uh, a bit more about shape and everything. So there's like stuff that that you can already understand what's going. Like you can start to understand like there's like a, like a best perspective already, a reference perspective, and like you can start to see like the character. But like it's all it's only like kind of just lines and shape. It's not. In volumes, it's, it's, I'm just trying to find like a interesting uh, composition. And uh, from that, since I know that this uh, instruction is, is going to happen in the grocery, and I know that I have no uh, uh, no knowledge of groceries and stuff, I start to I start to I start to look for references. And uh, most of the time, usually now, what, what I found is like the most uh, the most easy to find um, reference is to use Pinterest because the Pinterest, like, let me show you. Uh, the Pinterest, like, when you when you start like typing groceries, and then you, you, like oh you're like oh this picture is good for me. And then you, they're gonna suggest you a bunch of other pictures that are kind of the same, so you can gather a lot of different uh, pictures based on the same topic, and uh, and that's why I like Pinterest now. And all I do after that is just like taking those those uh, those images, and I use uh, Pure Ref for uh, for reference. It's a software where you can just gather uh, gather references, and then I have this this bunch of reference that, that I gather from uh, from Pinterest. See, you know, I can just like, so you have like, I just like, where is the website here? I just like click on this and drag and boom, that's it. I have everything. It's so fast. And it's like, it, it, I spend like maybe like one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, try to gathering like a, a maximum reference that I need for the illustration. And I'm like, so like I, I'm looking at my rough, And I saw that on the side there's gonna be like some um, like some uh, some frozen food. Here there's gonna like on the left side there's gonna be some meat. 
and uh, for that, in like, and I try to look for that in the references so I can I can rely on that. So see, like how like like for the frozen food, uh, I start to gather like the friends here, over here, and then like how it looks like after here. And I like to do that because it gives more texture to the to the drawing. Because it's impossible to know everything, so having a bit of references is uh, I mean a bit like a lot of references. Sometimes it's it's nice to just like like it's nice to have that so so you go faster and uh, it's okay if you don't know everything. And I don't think that there's someone uh, like an artist who wants to be a specialist uh, in groceries. I don't know. And. Uh, and after that, uh, after I gather like all the illustration, I start to do like the the sketch, the clean sketch. But, like, I have like I have the the thumbnails that are resized to the to a HD uh, resolution. Is around like uh, 10k uh, x 5k pixel. And then here you can see like I start like I just wrote down the opacity of the the of the app, so I still have the idea on the canvas. And then I I, I do the sketch, and um, usually uh, like for the cleaning space like that I can use like two or three uh, two or three layers. But like we've experienced uh, in uh, since I know those two characters already like uh, like uh, very well. I don't do too much reconstruction for them. So I just like lay down all the stuff I want already. And you can see that here, like, like in that sketching phase, I, I, I break down as well, like, uh, like the background and the character. Because uh, like, I, I, I'm not good at eyeballing everything. So I need to like, uh, to draw the grid, to draw the grid. So, so it helps me like, uh, like, like a measuring thing. And that phase, it's all that phase. It's all about um, measuring. It's about like pushing everything in the right size. Like, like you can see that, uh, like for uh, let me hide this character. Oop, let's make a new layer. Like those here. Like those. Those door here. It's all about like trying to put this, the right the, the the right size. It's okay if uh, it's not like if I'm missing information about like the door and stuff. As long as I have I have a feeling of repetition, you know. And I do the same for like for the top here. It's all about like measuring, measuring. It's kind of boring and uh, and uh, and not fun. But in the long term, in the long run, like when I, I, I go on the cleaning phase, there's so much that, uh, that I don't have to think of, of and it's, it's, it makes everything more easier and more enjoy, enjoyable for the end. So uh, yeah, the, the, the don't, like, uh, on the sketch phase, uh, I like to put all the known fun. So I, I'm sure that I, I'm having fun at the end. It's all about scaling. Like, I'm, I'm, like here, like, I'm just like, picking the size of the box be sure it's rough it's not an accurate size though but it's just it just happens to uh, to define like how far it is from the character and same for those like little um, handle like the like it's the, like it's like it's it's those white handle here so it's helped me like measuring distances and stuff mm -mm -mm. oops And after that, I just clean this as I, and I just do the, the the cleaning of the line. So this is the step three. Yeah, step three, cleaning of the drawing. And uh, what I focus on is like uh, just the tool. So I'm using the G pen. And the thing with the G pen is uh, it has like a, 
a pressure sensitivity on the size. So like the more I press, the the more the, the line is thick. And the thing is that when you are drawing, like when you are doing the sketch, to have to think about the thickness of the drawing is something that is like you, you are just adding more more complex thinking to to your process and uh, it's it's just a pollution for the for the sketching phase so i like so so that's why I'm, i like to do like a clean drawing phase so i just conf I, I i just focus on doing beautiful lines and uh, and you see like fr like from the sketch here everything is clear i know like what's going on and stuff it's almost like it could be like a, almost like almost it could be like a clean drawing as well, but the thing is that like by like I'm losing time, but by doing that at least I can just focus on the tool and focusing on just making beautiful lines and uh, and I can I can relax actually. I, I, this phase is more this phase is more relaxing, and uh, yeah, it's 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 it feels like you're listening to music or something because you're just focusing on uh, on the tool and mastering the the tool. And I guess with time, when you when you are like uh, you don't think too much about the tool, you can sketch uh, with the with the thickness as well and stuff like that. But I like to separate everything so everything is more easy at each step. Uh, just reading question: How did you go with practicing anatomy? I'm gonna answer that after maybe. French, Nordic, or Dutch accent? French accent. So I have seen your NFSW work, they are really good. It's just that I'm wondering how are you comfortable with that? I'm fine, but uh, since like this stream is not about NFSW, I'd rather not uh, show anything about that. I like to keep things separated. How long have you been drawing? 15 years maybe? Um, how do you manage wrist and hand pain? Uh, I just stopped drawing <laughs> when I have hand pain, actually. How long does a piece like this grocery store scene take you on average? Uh, just for the line drawing, I would say one day. One full day, so it's about 10 hours. And with uh, the color, uh, it's two days, I would say. It's like full days. It's like 10 from uh, 12 hours. Next, question, how you manage to put interesting shape into shadows and rendering of your characters? I'm going to answer that later. Do you ever think about compiling some tutorial or process for illustration and putting them on Gumroad? No, I'm fine. I can. I, I, I like just going yellow. I don't like uh, putting structure on it. I feel like uh, I don't. I want. I don't want to make it feels like it's too professional. Do you live in France? No, I'm living in America right now. But uh, yeah, I moved to America two years ago. Is Clip Studio better for lines than Photoshop? I would say yes. But I tried Photoshop a few times and I feel like I could do the same lines on Photoshop. It's just that I don't like the software. It's just a, a preference. I have been practicing line work by using really thin traditional pen. Do you think that's a good practice? Should I grab a, a brush pen instead? It depends on what you like. But uh, like uh, like the what is your end goal? And I know that the tool can be like very conflicting with uh, with your drawing skill. I know that I was trying to master uh, the the brush when I was inking, and uh, it, it was kind of very hard because it was taking too much uh, of my brain. It was like taking uh, eighty percent of my brain, and I couldn't focus on drawing. But but you just need to practice. Your next kid. When are you doing comics back? Ah, uh, maybe soon. I don't know. I won't say anything about that. Nothing is clear. 
I am interested in how you color though. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about color after that. Or should I bite the bread and focus on digital work? It depends on what you want, because for me, uh, at some point, I, just, I, I, I just like don't give any, I like, uh, like I was so focused on technique that uh, it, it was bothering me. And at some point uh, I found that with digital, it makes things easier for me just to focus on storytelling, which is good as well. How do you study anatomy to keep yourself so accurate with most of the construction? I can talk about that later, but uh, it's very messy. Anatomy is a very messy topic for me. Do you paint your color with lights, or it's different step in your mind? Uh, I will talk with the uh, the color when I, I'm going to talk about colors. How do you think from simplifying? How do you think from simpl simplifying the, to communicate human anatomy? Uh, it's I, I would say it's a mix of knowledge and taste, and uh, it comes with time as well. It's a mix of of those three elements. But I can go more deep after, or maybe in another video. It depends on how much uh, I can talk about uh, composition and. Uh, like an illustration perspective. Yeah, all the color stuff I will answer later. How do you get the courage and commitment to take on a full illustration and not just do the study endlessly? Well, that's the thing with me is uh, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to draw uh, with no no story. It's very hard for me actually to just draw something randomly. I need like so, like a, a story or like a, a background story, like a very something that keeps me going and uh one of the like one of the things that i would recommend to people is to fi fix like a, a easy end goal like for illustration like something that you know that you can finish and i mix uh with, i mix i mix the illustration with, with like learning something and enjoying the piece at the same time so it's like half and half so there's not too much frustration when i'm doing the piece like I will never do a piece where it's like when it's like one hundred percent learning. Like I'm uh, like it's I, I will always like uh, like put something that I know and I enjoy drawing. Like for for this piece, it's like more about those two characters. So I enjoy drawing those two characters, and the painful part is uh, the background. Like trying to like trying to be good at measuring things and stuff like that. And since I know that I'm gonna enjoy those characters in the background, I, I I will want to finish this illustration for sure. Have you artist references? Yeah, I can talk about that after. This Kane is a guy, I thought she was a girl. I had that a few times. That's funny. How do you get better at shape language? Uh, I, I can talk about it later. So like, uh, let's jump back on the, on the illustration thing. So, so, so from, for, for the illustration, I, like, I'm just, now I'm just going to share you some tips that to, to make things a bit more easier, because right now I just explain like how I think. So, uh, so I'm just going to give you some tips for, uh, for perspective. Let me found uh, the list. Uh... So like one of the, like the common question I, I have most of the time is, uh, how do I place the perspective grid in an illustration? And uh, th those are just tips. I'm not gonna teach you perspective. Like, I'm, I, there's like a lot of people who can teach you perspective better than me. I, I'm just like giving you like uh, like 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 some tricks that that will make your life kind of more easy. So like, let's see. Let me find a good like a a, a tricky thumbnail. Uh, thumbnails that doesn't have too much. Uh, uh, sometimes I just start the thumbnails with, with perspective, so it's uh, uh, 
So let's take this one, like, this one is like, uh, it's gonna be, it's not the best, uh, well, actually it's good, just to lay down, like, how to, to lay down a, a perspective green. Well, I'm, actually, I'm just gonna take the rough, like this uh, part here. 1000, 5k. So I resize the thumbnail. So let's say I have a frame. It's gonna be like a very quick frame. So from that, like, how do I guess the, the perspective from that? And uh, the, the most easy is, like, the, the best way is to find the, the, the eye level of the camera or the level of the camera. And it's kind of like, with like that rough, there's like a lot of possibility. It's all like uh, on how you, you want to make it feel. And most of the time, I don't find the eye level from the, like, from the first time. So what I do is like, trying to find the strong lines of my rough that will make the, pers the, the, the very first perspective line. And in this one, what I found the, the strongest one is like this one. That is like where the, the big guy is like sitting on with his arm. It's this line, see? Here. And then I need to find a second one. And the second one is very important. It's, like, it's gonna define everything. And here I'm like, oh, this line from the background, it's, it's actually like not too bad. So I'm, I'm just trying to go like on the same direction. And boom, I have, I have, I have two lines. So wait, let me do it on the, on the new layer. So. so I have two lines now. The opacity. And from that, just from that, you can guess the perspective. And like a lot of people, like when they are like beginners of perspective, they're like, oh, but like, the, like the, the, this vanishing point is going outside the canvas. How am I gonna, how am I gonna like measure everything to like to fit perfectly, like, like to, to, to join those points? I need like a big, uh, a big canvas to, to be able to connect with the vanish, vanishing point. And there's, it's, it's just about, and the, the, the trick, is to use math, mathematics. Like you use the, the corner of the illustration here, like left and right, see? And all you do is measuring after that. So from this point, like, let's use red. From this point and this point, all you need to do after it's just like you can use a ruler to measure like perfectly but for me it's, it's about learning how to measure by with your eyes so i'm just guessing it by myself it's not accurate 100 percent, but it, it gives you a good idea of the of the grid so i so from those two points i just take the half so i'm going half it's about here and those two points here i go with the i do the same and then i just connect those two and then I do the same here. I just take the same size here. I just transfer this size here. It's about here. And the, this one is like, if I was guessing, it's about there. So th that's how I connect the thing. And then you can just add even more, like you just do the half of this, the half of this. And then you do it like that. Oh. And then you just like you have a, like you can just measure this one and transfer it here. It's like about here. 
And this one is like about here as well. And the thing is that when the lines is starting to be uh, horizontal, which is going to be around here, you know that it's going to be the eye level. This is magic. You figure out the eye level without knowing where it is. And then you can figure out the other direction. Because like this uh, eye level is the direction for like this this grid in direction in that direction and in that direction as well. So then I just all I need to do is find another line, let's make it blue, for the other direction of the the vanishing point, the second vanishing point. And I see this line here. Why can why I cannot draw? Oh. I see this line here. I'm like, oh, I like, I'm like, I'm liking this direction. So all I need to do now is doing straight like this. And then, since the eye level is uh, is is uh, is for both uh, vanishing points, I just need to measure those two points. So like this one, I can transfer it here if I want. But what I'm what I'm gonna do is just like cut it in half as well. So I'm going half here. And between those two here and the eye level, I'm doing half. And I'm breaking the, uh, and I'm cutting again in half here and again here. It's not like perfectly accurate, but it gives you like the right direction for everything. And you are in, and like, and I can see like that you are still thinking, oh yeah, but it takes a lot of time. Uh, it's like a lot of uh, like workout and measurement and stuff. The thing is that once you know that theory, and you start to like like everything I showed you, I just do it free freehand and uh, and uh, I just I believe, uh, I just like guessing everything. Right now I'm just like giving you the perfect uh, the, the perfect theory. And most of the time, what I do is just like guessing by myself because I I know already that I already know the the theory uh, like behind it. Because I know that it's all about cutting half and half. So all I know now, what I need to know is just I need to like do free and like this, and then free and like this, and I, like I just free and like, everything very fast. And I know that the I love one is about here. So I'm, uh, and with with time, you, you can start to guess everything uh, by yourself. And it's a very uh, good way to uh, to practice perspective. So, like at the beginning, you you measure thing on the side with the corners, uh, with the the edge of the canvas, and then you start like slowly like doing stuff freehand and start to guess how it works. And even though like the the perspective is not like uh, perfectly accurate, it gives you already a sense of uh, of depth, of depth. And that's one of the things that I learned when I was doing comics, and. Uh, and just like spending like at least like a good six months uh, like doing those for me because I'm a slow runner, so I need to to spend a lot of time doing those, and uh, even even one year I would say, just like understanding how it works, like visualiz visualizing the the grid, it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's it's a good practice. So after that you will go faster, and I'm guessing with like with, if you are very good, you can just like guess everything with no constriction. You can be a Kim Chongji. Like I can show you here. Like this is the work where, like when I was uh, when I was twenty years old or twenty one. But here you can see in the blue line, like all the perspective I was measuring on the side. You can see like on the left here, like I was measuring everything the as with the perf the perfect uh, the, the 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 perfect uh, amount of uh, of units every time. I was breaking down everything in the, in the, in the perfect. Uh, the perfect way because I was learning still I was I wanted to do like everything with the the right theory and that was a very good practice with comics because like comics is like you know yeah you have a lot of frames and uh, you can just use the, the border of it and uh, so you don't have to uh, like put vanishing point outside the outside the canvas like you can see here it's obvious like how like I'm just like constructing everything all the time
And I think, like, if you want to be good at the perspective, it's it's a good foundation to uh, to, to to be good at laying down the grid. Because like you can just download brushes, I guess like that makes the, the grid for you. But the fact that you are you are drawing the grid yourself helps you feeling feeling the feeling the space. And the grid doesn't like a, a brush that makes the grid for you. It, like it makes it, it doesn't help you feeling the the space as, uh, at all. Using math to do perspective grid. What is this? The middle edge, exactly. I'm drawing like a middle edge uh, guy. You don't mind me asking how, how old are you? I'm 33 now. The app I use, I use this now as an option to put in perspective grid. This is the way I always do it too. Yeah, I'm, at, at some point when you are good at perspective, you can just like rely on, uh, on, the, on the tool because like half of the time I use the, the perspective grid on, uh, the perspective grid on uh, Clip Studio over here. Like this one, like you know, it's automatic after that. Like it's making the grid for you automatically. But I use it just because I know the theory, uh, the, the theory already. Because like even though if you have the tool to make the perspective grid, uh, it it won't make you better at perspective. You need to understand the the root of it a bit more. Yo, Dibuan. So like, that's the, the tips number one for perspective. And uh, the tips number two, I would say it's all about measuring again, but, uh, but how to place a character in the background and, uh, and stuff like that. And, and for me, it's what I like to do most of the time when it's like a very complex situation, it's put some uh, one one unit that will define the, the 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 whole piece, and for me the unit it's a it's a human human size. So let let's just let's just keep this uh, illustration actually. Let's start something different. So let's say like I, like I'm I'm doing my rough. I have like one character like this. And uh, one over like this. Oops. I always draw the character first because uh, that's what I like the most. And then from that, I, I, I try to figure out the, the perspective. And from the theory I show you, like the I'll show you, from, from now I'm just guessing everything. But like I have one line here. No, let's make the perspective different, actually, like this. Yeah. And grid over here, like this. So I just lay down like just a few lines like that. And when I want to do the background, like let's say there's a like there's a side work like that. It's it's very basic what I'm showing you, but uh, what I'm doing right now, but uh, it helps you understand better. And those are like different building. Like this is a block of building, let's say, over here. We have the side work like this. And what I do is transferring my, uh, my character that will be the reference for the size. So like I take this character and I transfer it. So I took this and I transfer it from the perspective like this. And I have the character that is the same size, but touching the wall of the building. And from now, it's all about experience and observing, uh, observing like what's going on outside, like when, in the real life. So from that, I, I start to guess like, oh, the size of the door is about uh, one and a half 
a, a human. So I'm just like, okay, the wall, the, the, the size of the door is going to be like this then. About like one and a half. And like, yeah, yeah I'm like, oh, there's like, the, like, like I, I transfer again, like this. This is the size of the character. And then like the car, like the, let's say there's a car over here. Most of the time, the car, the height of the car does stop over here for the size of a human. So all I need to do now is like, I know that the size of the, like of this guy here is going to end here. It's going to be like about like, like this. So I know that the height of the car is about here. And that's how I measure things most of the time. And I don't draw like those lines actually, like those big lines. It's all about transfer. Like it's, it's, it's mostly like, I'm just like, like following in, like, I'm not drawing the line. I'm just like following like this and just put a dot here and put a dot here. And then I have my unit. It's done. I have the unit for the, for the, for, for the wall. And I do the same here. I have the unit for the, for the, the end of the sidewalk. And just those two dots have, are helping me like, just like measuring things. Cause I cannot, I'm so bad at eyeballing things that I need to like lay down all the measurements. And that's like, that's a, it, that's a good way of measuring things. Like you just, you just like take a one reference from it's a human and then I just compare it to everything. Like you can take something else, like you can take like a, a door as the reference and then you can compare it to everything else. And uh, this way, like I know that from this, and like this line and this, like I know that here, if I put a new uh, a character here, like this, it's going to be the same size as this guy here. And I can show you more in depth in the, and it's all about like, like once it's, you don't have to be accurate, but you have to give like a, a general idea of what's going on in, the, in size wise. So that's what I like to do. Like, it's just like putting few dots that helps me like defines the size of, of stuff. Because it, once you start to think just in meters and stuff, it's so hard to, uh, to measure things. For me, it's, it's easier to, to compare objects one to another. How long did, did it take you to learn light and color? Uh, I, don't, I don't really know. I think color for me is the only thing uh, that I'm kind of... Uh, not natural, but it just came like that. What perspective book do you recommend? I would recommend... Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, how to draw. Let me see if I can find the book. It's a very uh, basic book, but uh, it gives like, I think like half of the tips I'm giving you, it's in the book as well, in this book, so. Yeah, this one. I'm giving you the link on, uh, on YouTube. Perspective for comic, art, comic book artist: how to achieve a professional look in your artwork. Inside is very, like it's, the drawing is very uh, old school, I would say. But uh, the information he's giving is very, uh, it's very nice. I've commencé à apprendre Blender à un moment. Yes, I did try to learn Blender, but uh, pretty is boring for me. Yeah, I tried to learn ZBrush as well. ZBrush was boring to me. And yeah, I would recommend Scott Robertson as well, actually. Just to learn how to draw like perspective uh, freehand. Scott Robertson is like very good for that. I used to do to, to learn from uh, from his video tutorial actually. So one like one of the other tips is uh 
is like you don't have to realize to, to realize that much on the on the on, on the perspective when you go background. There's like a, like different kind of tricks to cheat with the with the perspective. And uh, one of it is is like it's 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 when uh, you uh, you do a composition when you don't see the ground. Like right now you see the ground, and and because of that you need to measure things. So like, let's say like uh, um, like I'm, I want to do a composition with no uh, no where, where you where we don't see the ground. So like I draw a character over here like this. And then I draw another character like this. The thing is that one like and uh, and then I decide that the ground, the eye level, is gonna be like around here, like very like, very very low. So it's not in the like you don't see it in the camera. So what you can do like when 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 you are doing that kind of trick, it means that you can play with like you can just focus on shape, and not uh, not like uh, on measurement. So like even though like I'm laying I'm laying down some uh, some perspective. Like let's say it's since it's going this the right way though what you can do actually is uh is cheat a lot with the, the size of things like this character here it doesn't have to stay that size because you don't see the ground you can just like go this size as well. And this one is like, it can even be like that size. Like, if you want to play more with shape and, and, and stuff. And like, even though I'm, I'm, I'm changing the, the size of both, it doesn't mean that uh, the distance between them is changing. For me, it's it's actually that like with those two right here, it's the, it's about the same distance about, about this. It's all about where you put your camera, uh, like how close you put the camera from uh, from the character. So it's more now. It's more like since you don't see the ground, like let's say I, I do like a, a side view of it, like you have the character here and the character number number two here. And the camera is here. So like the like the more I'm getting close to the camera, uh, I'm getting close to the character here, the bigger it's gonna get here. And this one, the smaller is the smaller it's gonna get. And the thing the thing that when you don't show the, the ground is like you don't put any measurement. So so the so the viewer doesn't have time to uh, when he's he's looking at the illustration. He doesn't have time to, to, to measure everything. So for them, it's going to work because it's, it's making a, dy a dynamic uh, composition uh, and reading. And since, and since uh, like most of people don't spend more than five seconds on, on a drawing, it's, it's working like 100% all the time. And that's what I, I used to do like a lot in comics. Like that's how like, actually like how I, I lay out my, uh, you know, the, the balloons for, for text and stuff. Because like once, because like, let's say I like this guy is talking, blah 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 blah. I just need to put that bubble like this, and I think blah blah blah. And I don't need to figure out the perspective. I just need to fit the character in that space after that. And it can be like this. And it's fine. And then. I, I start to draw the 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 perspective a little bit to, to give a bit more dimension. Like the, the eye level can even be here, as long as I don't see the ground. 
it's gonna work because because you you are giving like no way of of measuring for for the viewer so for them it's gonna yeah it's 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 gonna be like very nice to read very easy and that's what i do most of the time for comics because uh you need uh, you need to find an easy way to to place your your uh, your balloons for composition and uh when you find that kind of tricks it makes your life way more easier when there's a lot of uh of, of stuff happening like like uh, showing you uh, if i have a good example like over here, even though you don't see the background, something I'm using a lot, like a, a big head bubble here, it's just about like feeling the composition. Since I don't, I'm not showing the the ground. It's so easy to just like play with shapes and uh, and, and making things interesting, like big and small. I'm just focusing on making a, a big a, a big shape and small shape. But see how I cheat a lot with like not showing the ground even here, like lowering down the the the, the, the camera. Like that is, it's like, it's, it makes things so much easier. And uh, like when I do comics, I like to like to do half and half. So like, you know, like I, I do a lot of stuff where I don't measure things like here and here, like uh, frame number two and frame number three. And then I have a frame where I measure things or I measure, I measure everything. So the, the, the viewer doesn't get lost. So, you know, like you can, like you can have, like, cause like if you, give to the viewer just like frames where you cannot measure the space he will get lost at some point so like i always go give them like one frame where, where where they had a chance to measure things and this is the frame for me that what they are measuring stuff and i always do that for everything like this one is the same like i, I like this, this this first one is like giving the measurement for everything and then i just stop doing that and then I, start, I, I do it a little bit more again just for the sake of the composition of the page and this is the same here, like one here, and then boom, everything dis disappear. That's it. The same here, like you don't see the ground. I, I can do like just whatever. Same here, same here. See, like those one, can, it could have been, it could have been even more smaller. And it's just the same over here. Over here. It's only the last one where, where I just like measure everything. And like knowing that, like. Like knowing that you don't have to 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 be in pain like hundred percent of the time in comics is very good. At least I think at least for me, I like like giving me like some space where I just like I'm just drawing more relaxed and not thinking too much about space. And then like just one frame where I'm just uh, I think like hundred percent about frame and that's it. It's all about splitting up your energy in the right way when you do comics. I would say. Like even that crazy background here, the fact that, that I don't do like uh, a ground has me like just going crazy on the on those ones on on those repetitions because you you don't know where like you don't know where, like what is the ground so you don't know how what is the height of it and uh, it feels like it's a very big big one even actually even I I don't know what is the side of this I I just want to give a feeling of like a big thing and that's it. The same for this frame. It seems like it's very complex, but you don't see the ground, so it's way more easier to, to measure things. Uh, it's just way more easier to play with shape. Like this one here on the left, I'm not even sure it's the right size. You know, I just wanted to make fit. I just wanted to make fit like a good composition compared to the uh, to, to, to those two balloons here from left and right, and uh, and so you have like an interesting read, you know. And so I just like, like, since like, you, all you need to understand is, uh, is that when you, when, when you do see the ground, you can play with, uh, with the size of elements a bit more. You can give, like, you can add way more deformation. It just depends on how close the camera is from the, the first object. Even that, like this one is, is it's so nice. Cause like, I can just play with the shape of the window on the, on the right to make it like a nice composition. So there's that there's that tip for uh, for perspective. Like when you don't do the ground, there's a lot of uh, way you can uh, you, you can uh, you can get out.
and uh, one of the other th like like it's, it's about the same things, but it's all it's all about logic for uh, like the, the the next tip is like it's like how the brains of a human works. So like what people will understand is like when it's far away, it's it's small, and when it's it's very close, it's bigger. And uh, sometimes when I like I'm very lazy at measuring things. Like it's a very basic thing about the perspective, but I like to divide it those uh, divide the the the, the perspective into three uh, three spaces. We have the foreground and uh, the foreground, the background, and the middle ground. And most of the time, what I like to do is like making a big shape of the of the foreground like this. And then you have the middle ground that is like middle shapes, you know. And then the back the the, the the far back, the like the the background is like small shapes like this, and you have perspective, and I do a perspective like this. Most of the time, it's a one point perspective. It's not like a two point. Like I do a lot of one point because you can cheat a lot as well with that. Because like the way you measure thing with the one point perspective is just depending on how close the camera is uh, to the to the to the character to the, the character. So like, like let's say like you have like a door here on the side, like this. How are you gonna define the the the, the length of of this? You can start to like uh, like go deep in the theory, but I'm sure that there's a lot of people uh, who who doesn't do it. So you can start guessing by yourself. And what I do is like guessing for the composition. So I'm like, oh, it's like it's gonna be this width for the composition. And this width just depends on how close you are from the camera, uh, how, how the camera is close from the from the character. Like if you are far away, the width of this is just gonna change to this. So like for, like since it's uh, like a, like a, the rough phase or the sketch phase, you can just like define everything uh, by yourself, and that's the magic of drawing because it's not like only about physics; it's about like making interesting composition. You can just define that it's gonna be like this, even though the camera is far away or close to the character. It's fine. It's it's a drawing. It's not like a, 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 a like a real photography. So you can cheat a lot with that. You can say like, oh, even though the camera is far, is very close, I'm just gonna define the size of the door like this, and then you start measuring like this just to fit the composition, even though the camera uh, is is not at the right uh, at the at the at the right spacing. Of course, like someone with experience would, would tell you that, oh, it's, it, it's not possible to have like this width and stuff. But for the sake of the composition, sometimes it's more interesting to make a, to, to make cool shape uh, than, uh, than figure out the real physics, the real size of, of stuff. And with the one point perspective, that's, it's, it makes things easier for that. Because you, you can just like decide uh, by yourself what is the length of that. Of course, at some point, if you go too large, it's, it's starting to be like very strange because the door, it's impossible that this side is thicker than, uh, than this size. But one point perspective, it's uh, one way to cheat as well. I use that a lot in, uh, in my comics as well because it's, it just helped me to, uh, to like decide the, like the, the, like the, the composition way more easy, easily. What are you using for this gallery? Uh, I'm using uh, pure ref. So sorry, you can just like drag uh, drag pictures on it. It's very nice to uh, to gather references. C'était le bon temps, elles ont bien vieilli, mine de rien. Ouais, bah pour moi c'est un c'est un peu le, le meilleur, c'est un, un peu le golden edge de de mon style on va dire. What's the name of the comic? It's not released yet. Uh, I I kind of it's on hold right now. Could you tell more about the two, the two characters you have been drawing often lately? Can we expect some secret project from you? Uh, those two characters, like the black guy and the, the big uh, red guy, hair guy, it's, uh, it's more like a practice project. It's more like, more like trying to mix uh, work and uh, personal project at the same time, because uh, I'm working for Overwatch and, um, and I consider myself very bad at sci-fi. So I'm trying to... Uh, be 
get good at sci-fi stuff, but I'm and still having fun at the same time. So it's a mix of like trying to learn Overwatch shape and having fun. So there's nothing original about those those two, but uh, it's more like for like a, the technical sake uh, of work for work. So I think for the tips, that's it for me for the perspective. Of, I think I can like do some other tips for. Uh, like for some other videos, but, uh, I just wanted to focus on perspective uh, on uh, on this one. So like there was some question about colors uh, for guts. So yeah, we can we can start on question now. So uh, there was some question about colors. Oh, I just saw a question about uh, three points perspective. So, does this work for the three perspective points? Yeah, I, I'm guessing it's when uh, I was uh, showing you how to measure uh, the perspective grid. Uh, it's uh, kind of it's working still, but it doesn't give you the exact measure. So, like, like. Like it's working because it's gonna it's gonna fit the it's gonna it's gonna go to the vanishing point anyway. But this like if you work in a three point perspective like this, let's say like this. Like this. Oh, it's very bad. Wait, I don't like it. Let's say like this. Like if you want the real the real unit though. Like if you want the the real size physically, in the piece of like this this, this distance Oops. over here, you need to do a more complex math. It's it's not gonna be here. It's gonna be a bit more far away. And for that, you need to to work with the the transfer the the, uh, the cross transfer. I call it. But like you have like those those two uh, like those two lines that is. The, the uh, the third point perspective so like i have the cross i do the cross transfer like this and of course with time you can eyeball that but that's the the theory behind it and this is you see it's a little bit more far away so if you want the real size you have to to do the uh, the, the 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 measurement again but for me it's all about like just la laying down the perspective to, to have a sense of depth depth it's... yeah do you ever get down doing three points perspective i, I do that like half of the time actually because like three points perspective is like the the most realistic way of doing uh space Two points, pers two point perspective doesn't really exist. Even one point doesn't exist. Like uh, most, like this one, I just I didn't want to focus too much on the, to, to be too hard on the perspective, so I just keep it to one point. But uh, let me see. This is a one point as well. This one is the free point, but this one is more obvious because like the camera is out from the top. So it's not the best uh, example. I'm trying to find an ex example what the... Uh... It's very, it's not too obvious. I create this one. Now here I use the free point, so it feels like a... Even though I could have kept it to like two points like this, like just like keeping everything straight like this. The thing is that uh, the camera, the eye level, depending on how you change things, like, like I, I get, you can clearly see that the eye level is around here.
my guessing is that everything that is above the this uh, this eye level is gonna distort like this, and going under is gonna distort like this. It's always gonna be the case uh, in real life. And since like the since my eye level is like so so low here, I just like. Instead, I just like do straight line for the three point perspective. And I don't care too much about what's under, so I just keep going. It gives just a deformation, but even though it's impossible to have it for in real life, it's okay. It's just like the, 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 the viewer would be okay because the, 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 he will understand that it's like a, a line to follow, a logic to follow. Like I think the pre, like when you are like when you are good enough for after one point and two point doing three point is good because it just gives you like a more rest, re realistic feeling. But it's way more way much more more work. So depends on what you want to do. Sometimes I find myself that just one point is enough for what I want to tell, and uh, like I, I don't need to be like that good technically, and just one point is enough. You don't have to show off every time. Do you have tips for getting a more polished look? Uh, what do you mean by that? Sorry if someone already asked that, but what kind of studies do you recommend for someone who's starting out? And how many hours per day? Uh, Well, it all depends on uh, on uh, on the person actually, because like there's some people who can learn stuff in just one day, you know. And for me, I, I was like a very slow learner, so I can I can just explain my uh, explain to you like how, how I learned during, but this might not this might not not apply to you, because uh, it's like everybody is so so different that uh, it's impossible to direct someone uh, like. In the right direction, you need to find your like, your own way. I would say you need to understand yourself first and knows like like what you need, like uh, like exactly what uh, what you need to understand things and how what you need to learn. Like what what is the exact tool you need for for learning and stuff. That is you, and uh, that's the the most difficult part. Like like learning how to learn, and uh, so I can explain a bit more about like my myself. Like. Like let's say around here, I was kind of like uh, I was like uh, I don't know like nineteen, and uh, I was just like in engineering school, and uh, I wasn't drawing that much, and uh, and I just I just quit engineering school. I didn't want to do that, and I wanted to go back to art, and that was like the the kind of drawing I had after uh, engineering, and from that I was I was I, like I kind of like ne kind of never practice drawing. And uh, I was like, oh, I need to step up now. So from there, I, I was starting to like trying to learn anatomy, perspective, coloring, and stuff. I think those ones were after, though. It's more those ones that was like uh, when I stopped uh, engineering school around 19. And then, like, uh, what I did, it's like trying to find a program that fits me. And what I understood for me is like a lot of repetition. I had to do a lot of repetition. It's like when you are doing sports, it's like training your muscle to understand something. Like, it has to be automatic. So what I did is like a lot of practice, like for perspective, I practice a lot, like drawing perspective grid and, uh, like, uh, and studying anatomy. So like what I did is like, I did a lot of practice, like, uh, like, like just studying photo photography first, because like, uh, like for me, like uh, I didn't have had access to any um, live drawing uh, session and stuff like that. I was living like uh, in the suburb of Paris, so yeah, there, there was no uh, drawing classes and stuff. So I need to find. I, I, I just need to find something by myself to study things. And the best way for me was studying pictures. So I, I just like go on. Uh, at the time, I was going on Divan Art and uh, and just grab a bunch of nudes and bunch of like photography and study from it. From it, it was the best like the, the best solution at the time. It wasn't like the the, the top notch, 
solution because the best one is like the, the live drawing. But at the time, that was the, the best solution I had. So like, I was just like studying from photography and stuff. And what, what, what it made me realize when I was studying from that is that uh, I was like, it's like, I knew that, like areas that I was good at seeing things. But I wasn't uh, uh, like. But I wasn't good at um, at techniques. I wasn't good at uh, at theory. I wasn't good at uh, guessing volumes and stuff. And you could see it from uh, from from those drawings. Because like everything is kind of like uh, there's no. It's so random. There's nothing that is like really re like it's just like based on like some uh, some references from mangas and stuff. And when I like when when you do that. Uh, when I drew that and then I start studying stuff and then I see, oh, I'm like, oh shit, how come it's, it's so different from this and this? And like, uh, and people would say like, oh, it's just copying and stuff. But it's just because my eyes are already trying to see things uh, very, very uh, like, uh, like they're already well trained to see things. And uh, it's because I, I was doing a lot of Postmaniac. Postmaniac is like when, uh, it's a, it's a website when uh, like no it's no it's down it's down but uh, it was like it was giving you 3D poses and you had to draw it every 30 second and what that website teach me is how to how to draw with the the right side of your brain or left side I don't remember and uh, when you draw with the right side or left side I don't remember uh, the, of your brain you are just drawing what you see and uh, just learning just learning that in that phase it just like it, it just like helped me to see things quick, quickly. So when I was studying stuff, I could do it very quickly. Because before, like at this stage here, it was so hard for me to study things. Because like it, it, would take, it would take me like, like, I don't know, five hours to like to do something like this, like a drawing like this. But when I, I started doing, like doing post-maniac and starting to learn how to draw with the right side of the brain, I just started to be better at seeing things very fast. And like that's why like like those drawings here are, are like like I was like I'm like oh shit, oh shit how could it means that I can see that far, and it's, and 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 my knowledge is is that bad here on the left, and there's a, a huge gap a huge gap between those, and like my my quest was to uh, to close the, to uh, to make the gap between those two smaller and smaller and smaller over time. And here like after post maniac you can see that uh, after that I was like trying to find solution to study arts without the live drawing stuff. So like I was going out to museums and stuff and like was just drawing the statues in the museum. And like still I was like trying to figure out stuff by myself. I wasn't trying to like copy uh, any other artist and stuff. I was trying to be naked. Like I was trying like not to like try to draw from mangas and stuff, even though like I was like influenced by a lot of mangas, like, like Evangelion, One Piece, Naruto and stuff. I wanted to draw like what is me, so that's why I, will, I wanted to go like from the beginning, like restart everything. And uh, so like when I was doing stuff, I, I just trying to see like how I would interpret stuff by my, like by myself. And that's how like how it was at the time. And I think I was like twenty years old, uh, or like when I was doing the, those kind of stuff. And then like, at the at the same time, I was learning like perspective and uh, and volumes and a little bit of anatomy, even though anatomy. Uh, it was kind of it was kind of messy, and then I fixed myself some challenges. The best way to, to learn things is to fix cha cha uh, challenges. But the thing with challenges is, challenges is that uh, sometimes you fix challenges that is too hard for you. And for me, it has like like I said before, it has to be a mix of it uh, of both. So I need to like so like so so I was thinking like what what keeps me drawing, and what keeps me drawing is satisfaction. Like being happy about something, like about being happy about finishing something. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do comics where I'm gonna practice only perspective, and it's gonna be and it's gonna be only half a page. Like you see the ratio here, it's only half. A, it's not like the the traditional comic page. So I just I just cut in half the the amount of work I need to think about doing comics, and just focusing on um, on uh, on perspective, and. Uh, and from that, like, it means that like, I, I finish things way more quicker. It doesn't take me like one week to finish one comic page. Like for those pages, it took me like only like one day. And the fact that I can finish something in one day gives me the satisfaction to move forward. So like the more I was like, you know, like I was like, and then I was like doing more and more and more and more pages. And I was like, 
like practicing more perspective, even more, even more, even more. And you can see that there's like a, like, like I said, a lot of repetition. So I can learn the perspective and enjoy the thing at the same time. And mixing those two, like, like for me, the most important is like being happy. And if you're not happy, uh, like if you spend too much time and uh, you never see the end of this, you never, you never gonna move forward. So you have to go like, like with small steps. For me, it's like it was all about like perspective on this one. So it was just the main focus. It's okay if the other stuff was, is kind of bad, like the character and stuff. And after that, I was thinking like, okay, now I did too much perspective, and uh, what I need to learn, what do I need to learn now? And the next step was about learning more about. Uh, like the position and making the drink better and this like like this project was more about focusing on making like a like a, a good story and um, making like a, some cool composition so like how, how did i was like oh i need to find a story where i don't have to think about perspective too much and i was like like this I, i'm not gonna tell you the story of this comment but i was like okay then it means that uh, i don't need to see the like uh, like i need to, to get rid of the ground I need to, uh, I need to, uh, like, I need to change the story to fit my practice. So, like the characters, what I did is like they could work in the air. Just making that just helped me to not think about perspective. So, like, like you see, like how those background has no ground, like it's like giant trees on the clouds and stuff. It's just helping, just thinking about the drawing, like improving my style and stuff. Like you can see that from this and this. The drawing is already different because it's more like I just I just like thinking more about uh, the subject, and I'm very like pragmatic about stuff like that. I'm like, oh, what do I need to do to improve that field? What do I need to uh, like to to balance out to be sure that I'm satisfied and I can keep moving forward? And it's uh, actually like stuff like that. Since like the background is so so much more easier, I can just be more uh, like. Uh, like easier on the shapes and stuff and uh, just uh, practice those kind of stuff and you can see here like uh, like after that i just decided that to draw like people outside and stuff as well so i was drawing a lot outside just going outside and drawing people like i had like i don't know 15 sketchbooks like this like you know just like going outside as well and drawing background like that and uh, and just like spending a bit of time outside during, during people helps you. Uh... Sometimes you don't learn things from that, but you, you experience things that helps you in your drawing. It's more about feeling something when you are drawing than uh, learning something sometimes. And I feel like when I was doing that kind of stuff, I wasn't learning too much from a perspective, but I was feeling a lot of, uh, of the drawing, like, you know, like how interesting I want to make uh, my illustration. And see, like those drawings here, this one, like, like I remember, I just made it in twenty minutes. This one, twenty minutes, twenty minutes. This one is like, I don't know, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. And uh, it's just all uh, thanks to uh, like how to draw with the right side of your brain, like like learning how to draw like with that that way, just like showed me that every everybody can draw. But it's, but but you you don't know how to how to um, understand things. But you can still draw. And then I, I go like to the like to the third phase of my comics. It's more of, it was more about like okay, I don't want to to learn techniques anymore. I just want to go yellow. I just want to be uh, cine, cine, cinematographic and stuff. And the drawings start to be less more like like kind of strange in the shape and stuff. It's less solid, you know, like less in volumes and stuff. I I just wanted to be good at the composition and be good at uh, playing with like uh, shapes and lights and stuff i was uh, i was very missing in that uh, in that project you could see that like the head over here is like like very messy in the volumes and stuff compared to, to this one that has like more more stance because I, I was just focusing on the composition i didn't want to focus on uh, laying down the volumes and see that, you, like here, I, how, how I can just freehand stuff here and stuff like that. And it's all because that, thanks to like this first step here that I learned that I could do the. And see, see here, like I start learning the tricks of like uh, how to place your camera and stuff, like how to cheat with the perspectives so you, I don't have to draw it and stuff. 
And that's how, like, like yeah, I'm not saying it's a long answer to your question, but uh, that's how I learned. It's like trying to have that situation step by step. I don't, I don't try to 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 have big goals that that will never like that will never that I will never finish. I will always try to pick something that pick something that I can finish in one day. This is the the best way for me. It depends on some also on people. Sometimes there's people who can just like one week is 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 short for them, so it's fine. But for me, one day is the best it's the best timing. Sorry, it was a long, long answer for the question. Uh, is there a theory behind appealing shape? Uh, there's a theory about it. Animation people made a theory about um, about how to make a, uh, appealing shape, and it will be books as well. And uh, it depends on how your brains work as well, how, how are your tastes as well. And what I found for me, like I'm just talking about myself because uh, that's what I know the best. It's a, it's a mix of like shape, tastes, and the viewer. Those are the, like the, like that's how I see shape for me. So I can give you like some example because uh, like when I like when I was really, like, when I when I started like really like like uh, learning drawing, there was some artists uh, like that were very famous famous, and I I, I I couldn't understand why, like everybody was saying that they were very good and stuff, and uh, I can show you some example. Like this one artist I remember like everybody was praising the the artist. And when I was 20, I couldn't understand why uh, everybody liked the, the drawing and stuff. So for me, it's, her. it's Claire Wendling. Everybody at the time was saying that uh, like, she was so good at drawing, like everything is so good and, uh, and so perfect. But with my eyes of an inexperienced uh, artist that was running drawing, when I was seeing that, Uh, it takes too much time to have a big. Like when I was seeing that, I was like, "There's something wrong about those drawings." Like, uh, like I was like, "I don't understand those shapes." It's so, it's so curvy. It's like so strange. It's like it's too, there's too much deformation already. Like this kind of stuff. Like it's like so curvy over all over the place. You see what I mean? And uh, what what I realized after like like uh, maybe four years later, when I was getting more experience from drawing, is that when I was seeing those drawings, I was seeing as a viewer, and uh, a normal guy who doesn't draw, we probably don't understand what those shades means, and uh, that's how I shape my styles. It's a mix of how how, how far I can push the shape of like a leg, let's say like a, the shape of a leg. How far I can I can push it to make it believable and real, and but not not too shapey, so the normal viewer will like it, and we still won't ask won't ask any question about uh, is it a leg or not, and uh, like like don't get me wrong like this artist is like after like three or four years of like experience she's one of the best for me like she's one of the best artists now for me. And uh, she's like, well, yeah, she's one of the best with Kim Jong Ji and stuff like that. But uh, like, when you sit as a normal uh, as a normal guy, sometimes you he he wants some explanation about the shape. He's like, oh, why is it like this? Why is it like this? And that's how my style is shaped around with the viewer uh, the, the 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 viewer uh, point here. Is like me. It's like very shapey, but it's very stiff at the same time, because like. Like making st uh, stuff stiff makes it easier for the to, for the normal people to understand. So so there's like like there's like thirty percent uh, drawing for like like there's one firm like uh, like tr uh, like about techniques that is shape. So it's like uh, from uh, like the island from animation that is like you know like when you do a shape on the left side the the right the right side of the shape has to be like a a counter shape of it like this. You know, 
and then you draw like like this. Like it's all it's all about the contour shape in animation techniques and stuff like that. And taste is like uh, what I like. So it's more like oh, I'm studying like let's say I'm studying some. Uh, uh, let me see if I can find. It. Like uh, you guys know, like I like to like beef but like big muscly guys and stuff. So I'm like okay, so like I'm like from this like how can I like uh, like this is my those are the shapes I like like, like the fact that this those arms are bigger than the than the legs and stuff like that. It's more it's all based on taste uh, after that as well. And I take into account as well the viewer. So I'm I'm trying to be sure that the viewer, the viewer will understand what I'm doing. And uh, what I found most of the time that of, of artists that I like, they never care about that. They just do that. And uh, sometimes I feel like Claire, like Claire Wendling is in, is in that field sometimes. And uh, like when you get to artsy, the shape is interesting, but it's, uh, like it's, it's, not, it's not a good way. To, I mean, it's not sure that you're going to touch everybody. And my goal was to touch everybody. So of course that's how I, I base my theory of shapes. I know it's not very technical, but it's more like I'm just like telling you how to, like how I think about shapes when I'm doing it. So like I can show you some example on on my work. But see here, like the shapes are very, like, very straight at this, like very shapey, but very straight at the same time. Because like, like, uh, like I know that the viewer, like normally the legs, I'm sure that it should be more like this, this leg here. If you are like a real animation guy or, or like some, you want to make something very dynamic. This is a good shape. Uh, don't. Uh, this is a very good shape. Like even like normal people, normal people will like it. The thing is that it's a drawing, so you have like since it's lines and stuff, the 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 eyes of the the viewer will try to understand what's going on with the line, and the fact that I'm doing like so like so, such a, st a stiff shape like this, like it's a very like like this. Yeah, I, I'm still doing like the contour shape. Like I have this shape, like this round, and then I have a straight straight line here. I have still a straight line here. I still have like the the dynamic here. The thing is that if you give too much deformation, uh, the the viewer will just when, will start wondering what's going on, and that's why I, I like to keep it like kind of straight. It's kind of like me, like uh, just trying to be like more obvious for the viewer. So even though it's not realistic. The viewer will understand what's going on right away because it's very straight. It's going very straight to the goal. But see, like I'm doing, bit, uh, I'm doing those like counterbalance shape, but I'm I'm not exaggerating that much. And I'm playing more with this the proportion actually. Like here, like it's like a big size here, and it's smaller here. But uh, but for for me, that's how I work with shapes because sometimes like I feel like like when you get to artsy. Which I like as well, but the viewer will will never understand. I, I could make a more like a stylish version of this. Like I could like push stuff even more like this and uh, like going more even more crazy and uh, like, like you know. But at some point, uh, like if I was the normal guy, I was like, what is that that bump here? Like what's going on? I never seen a bump like that before. Even though, like, like as an artist, you will see, oh, it's because, like, like you have this line here, it's gonna be interesting. For sure, it's gonna be interesting as an artist. You're gonna see, it, see, see it that way. But as a normal guy, it was just like, what's going on with that bump? So you need to. Uh, well, I'm taking that in in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in case. Okay. But Postmaniac still works, I think. Postmaniac maybe is still working, but I don't want to use the the flash plugin. It is stream will be recorded. Yeah, I think so. 
I don't know. I was expecting Craig Mullins. Well, Craig Mullins, uh, it's painting, so. Well, I, can't, I can't say that much. I'm not good at painting. Will this be a before play? I think so. I don't know how YouTube works, but I think it's gonna uh, it's gonna be archived. So, uh, do you guys have any other questions? I don't know that there was some question before. I just forgot. So, if you can type it again. Oh yeah, anatomy stuff. And for anatomy, I would say that uh, the way I learn anatomy is very chaotic because uh, I'm very bad at anatomy actually. Like uh, the, to understand anatomy is uh, like my way, of, my way of understanding uh, volumes is very bad, at least on anatomy. And uh, how I learn anatomy is just based on observation. That's it's like it's just from like uh, like I kind of like kind of. Uh, Memorize the shape from, st from different studies, like uh, in the past. Uh, let me see. Like all those studies here, I can I kind of just memorize the shapes. But lately, like the the past few months, I, I've been trying to learn anatomy for real, though. So I would say it's a mix of like like memorizing memor memorizing those shapes and then trying to uh, draw like. Cubes and stuff at the same time, like putting stuff into uh, into volumes. But um, but yeah, I don't know what to recommend for anatomy because for me, anatomy is a very specific topic, and uh, and I don't like. I try to learn anatomy from books and stuff. But what I found is that every book has a different way to teach anatomy, and uh, they have like a, a different way to uh, draw things. Like some someone is gonna draw boxes, someone is uh, gonna draw beans shape. And uh, all those uh, way of teaching wasn't fitting my way of thinking. And uh, I wanted to find a, like an anatomy book or uh, that fits my way of thinking. And so far, I, I couldn't find anything. So I just like I just tried to figure out my own theory. Like I just like pick like a, let's say uh, like what I'm doing actually is like let's pick, let's take a picture. Like let's take this guy. So like what I'm doing is like just trying to uh, like I'm trying to figure out by myself how the volume works, and I'm not like you know there's a lot of books like uh, learning on like first you need to do the ge the gesture figure out the gesture and stuff like that and uh, like uh, trying to find the right balance, it never fits my way of thinking. So all I all I do is like take the picture and study it by myself. So I, I just try to draw it and try to understand what's going on by myself. But there's no real way of construction for me. Like I, I don't have like a real way of like oh it needs to be a box here first and stuff. Usually when I do anatomy, it's just like a bunch of shape until I get something I want, and then I just refine, refine all the time. And it's based on memory and uh, and study that I did from what I understood. Then just like laying down the um, like the, the, the whole gesture thing that like animation people are doing like like this like like I don't like doing that. This is not my style. I could do it, I think, but it's not my style. So it just depends on what how 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 you're okay with learning something from someone else. I would say, and for me, I wasn't okay for, from learning from animation or from any books because it, it it just felt like I wasn't learning the this like my way. So that's why for me anatomy is kind of a, a hard topic because there's no real theory behind it. I just like take pictures and study it. Dude, there's so many questions. I need to find back the... Do you have some books to practice anatomy? Uh, if I had to recommend one, 
there will be only one. But it's in Japanese. <laughs> so even I don't understand what's going on in this. Uh, but uh, Itokotaku, I think. Let me find the link. No, oh, I can't find the link actually. Uh, I'm sure someone has it, but uh, let's see if I can find it. Here. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah. So you can go on that website for anatomy. I, like, uh, at, at, like it's the one that I like the most, I guess. When move, when move from blocking values into rendering polishing things, is painting flat colors, shadow, and light enough to start rendering? I'm not sure I got the question. Uh, when move from blocking values into rendering polishing things, is painting flat colors, shadows, and light enough to start rendering? I think so. Yeah. Like if you like, if I understood understood your question, it's uh, like you you are trying to say that if you block out the the light and shadow is like, is it good enough to? Uh... Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's actually how I work. Is like I separate things into like um, into into two steps uh, when I'm I'm doing color. Uh, let me see if I can find a coffee. You can explain on this piece. So let's say like uh, like I, I want to pick the color for the for this for for the for the for, for, for this character in the for in the foreground. I will start with two colors first. So it's gonna be the color in the lights and the color in the shadow. So this is the. <laughs> let's do that actually. So see, like here, I just like, like if I, when I when I was like starting this this piece, it was just two flat colors. It was like first the light here, and second the shadow here. And you could see that in terms of value, this here, one, one, those ones here, they're all about the same color, the same value. If you if you blink a bit your eyes. You can see that it's about the the, the same uh, the same color, uh, the same value, and the same for number two, like like those here, like under here. It's about the same. So I just broke out the light and the shadow first, and then from that it's enough to start from ren to to render. And here you can start to see like. Before, like here, you see, like I, I, I did draw the two like this, big like this, like big like this, the shadow one. But actually, like you, you would think that the two is like this. But no, I started the three like this, and the step three is the rendering that will make those shapes interesting. So it's like. Like number three is here. See, like those shading here is making number three. It's the step number three. It's very easy to see the steps actually on my work. Like you can see, like step one is uh is the light or the shadow with the number two. Like step one and two are together. So I always start with those first, and then in the in the number two area, I start to work out the rendering. In the number one area, I start to work the rendering a bit more. 
And uh, what's what's easy about my process is that uh, in number one, in number two, the change that I do, it's very small. The only big change that happens is it's between one and two. So the big change, I do it first, and the small change, I do it at the end. So like one, two, it's like a very big, uh, a very big jump in values. You can see like, if you look at the color wheel, how, how much it jumps. Like same for here, like it's, it's jumping a lot. And then when I do the rendering, like, like it's around, like around here or in the breast, like you see like it's very small change. Like over here as well, it's a very small change. And the most, like normally, like the most important is part, is, is part one and two. Because, because like, like if you can read uh, the, your, your drawing from, uh, like from one and two, it's useless to go to step three. So you need to be sure that just by doing one and two, your piece is readable. At least with my style, that's how, that's how I work. And, it's, and I do that for every part of the illustration. Like, uh, like over here is the same, one. And two is like this, it's, it's that big. One and two. And that's why I work with composition when I do the light and stuff, is that how do I want this part to be more like, uh, like be important in the piece or not? It's like, okay, this one is gonna be like 80% in the shadow, 90% in the shadow. So that's why I only like put the light on this one here. That's, so it's way more easier to read. But like what I explained to you is just about the character here. But when I think uh, like about the piece as a whole, I do the same. Like it's like there's only like only two colors, two colors uh, uh, at the beginning for the whole piece. And you can see that if you unzoom, you can break it down to two again, like one. Like what you will see first is here. And that's the main color I put. And then the second color is like this. And that's how I work composition. For colors, it's like I need at least I just need one main focus point. Just one. The first point, the 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 first main uh, focus point has to be obvious. So like when someone is watching the illustration, it has to go straight away to the to the to the first one. So like when you watch the illustration, you go first to the character. One. If it do, if there's any hesitation, it means that your composition is not good. And then, it's okay for the other part to be uh, to be messy, because as long as you get the number one, it's fine. You have the good read. So what I do after that, like I have a big light shade here, that we that that you will read first, and then, the the viewer has got to start to uh, to to look at the left or the right side, like this, and then it's gonna focus on. This part, this small one, because this is the one in in the light kind of. But it's like you see how the shape of this is kind of smaller of this. And if it goes to the left side, since this one is too dark to see it, it's gonna jump on this. And it's gonna look, oh, there's a cup of coffee. Number two. And then maybe it's gonna go top like this to the to the to the buns like to the face after, and this this one as well that this shape that uh, that the, the the guy will, will go and number two, and this is like there's a lot of number two after that. You can just like since the most important is number one, after that it's okay for the number two to be like all spread out like this for me, because those are like that, that's what makes the illustration more alive. But it's not the main subject of the illustration. It's when the, the viewer wants to spend more time in the illustration and, and try to see like what's going on in the illustration. And uh, and when I want things to be like uh, to be hidden or to for to be forgotten, like those th this area here, all I do is uh, is merging the value most of the time. So you can see that like if I'm moving here. Even though it's a lot of different elements, a lot of different objects, 
the, the value doesn't change. You look at the color one, like it doesn't move at all. And same here. And I do that because my since my style is so sharp, and there's no like um, focus, uh, foc uh, focus like there's no blurry stuff, a blurry. Um, there's no blurry uh, painting or stroke and stuff. Like everything is so so sharp. I need to work that way. I need to find a way for the viewer to for the viewer to forget the background sometimes. Like how how do I manage to, to make the viewer to forget this part without using the the blur the, the blur function or to be like a less um, or to be more rough so it doesn't go here. And the only way I found is uh, making things more how do you say it more. Uh, more all together in terms of value. So it's all about like placing the, the light very cleverly, like in a clever way. Like the way I, I put the light is like this on this piece. Why is it not working? Oh. Like the light is coming from here. Kind of. So like, and, and it's, it feels like it's a kind of a lamp as well. So it's making a shape like this. The light is making a shape like this. See, with the perspective is going like this, and you see that, and and it's not. I'm sure that physically, it's jumping here like this. I'm sure that physically, it's it's not right. Like it doesn't follow the the right way of the light. But just making that shape like this, it's very interesting. So I, I would just simplify it to, to to that shape for the light, for the main source. So I can see how I, how I managed to to make like all this part forgotten by placing the light with a like a, with a like with a lamp style light, uh, light. But then when you focus on some parts, you are like okay, like it's not like since the light is coming from here, it's normal to have that shadow then that cast shadow over here. It makes sense, right? But then you are like, but how come there's this one here? Because like since the light is coming like that. The light over here shouldn't exist. Wait, me... Like this light over here doesn't exist actually. But what I, I found like when you unzoom like this, is that you don't get what is the piece that, that I'm drawing right now. So by adding that shadow that is not correct, I'm just giving more information to the viewer. So it's easier for him to uh, understand what is the volume of this. And I do the same here. Like this, the shadow sh shouldn't exist. To be like this. The thing is that when I unzoom, I feel like I'm losing something with uh, with this and this since it's the same value, kind of. So I'm just trying to some like cheating with shapes to give more depth to the depth to the to the piece. And I do I do I do that a lot with the all the small details like on the small part. Since I already got the main piece, the main light like this, the big light like that. It's okay to do like small the like mistakes after for the other part for for like all the other shadows. It's 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 okay because the, the main one is is correct. I hope uh, it's answered the question. I think I, I was too long on this one. How do you use reference in your work? Uh, I think I kind of explained earlier already, but. Uh, like uh, like a, like a, I think you can just watch the beginning uh, like uh, like thirty minutes after and you can see that I'm using like how I use references. Uh, great stream got got a question maybe too big of a theme, but how do you find where the front of the head ends ends and where the side stop? Why constricting the head in perspective? Mm. This is a, an easy question actually for me. I'm not even sure I can answer that question. Actually. <laughs> I'm so bad at uh, explaining anatomy. Uh, because like, like I can show you like how how it could be done, but when I'm when I'm but I never do it in illustration, so it's like I have the theory, but I don't know how to put it in uh, in in, uh, in practice. Most of, like 
like like Team Junji, he, he, he would tell you like just to do boxes like this, and uh, I'm not even sure I'm answering your question, but uh, and then you need to figure out the space in in it. And that's how I, I guess it's it's easier for me to see the end uh, and the uh, uh, like the end of the of the front and the and the end of the of behind because it has to fit the box. But I never do that, guys. Uh, it's uh, I never know how to to to, to do it in uh, in practice. But like when you have the box, like if you if once you have the box, it's much more easier to see the space somehow. This is strange because like uh, like when I'm not doing the boxes, it's so hard to to know. But that's how, like, I guess it's the best way to do it. Like, it's like draw a box, a, a box first. And I'll try to vis visualize a box and uh, and try to draw it. Don't like this. So yeah, try to draw with boxes. I know it's uh, it's an uh, answer that everybody is giving, like every, like every teacher is giving, but I think it's the, the right solution for if you want to run it. How do how do you decide how you will light things? You do a lot of amazing colors work with multiple light sources and extreme highlights. What's your process for that? Uh, most of the time, I will pick the light for the comp like the, to make things readable. So I, I will always place the light in a way of like what I want the reader to uh, to read first. And, uh, let's use use another piece. Like here, you can like most of the time just setting the lights to where you, you want the, the viewer to, to to like to to see first is the is most of the time the best option. But for me, it's like I want the viewer to see the the food first. It's easy. I just need to place a light on on top, and uh, and then it's just gonna light everything. So there's always a, a way to place. Like I always try to find a way to place a light that will make what I want. Be readable first, and uh, it's it's. I think it's the main way I, I'm doing it. Is the, I'm not I'm not cheating with uh, with uh, anything else. It's just like placing the right the, the light uh, of of to where the I want the reader to, to read the thing. And sometimes it's different. I do the what do you say the, the the reverse, and I have a good example for that. The reverse. Uh, it's this one. Uh, so here it's it's different. Yeah, the lights is all the background. The light is like all of this. So the character is completely in the shadow. So what you will read first is the shape of the character. So I either like put like the what 
what has to be read is like the like the shadow first, and then the light is blowing out everything behind. It's either like the it's either like you pick the light to be readable or the shadow to be readable first. I mean that's the way I'm uh, that's how I work. And then like once you you get that that that, that one and two see like what I was explaining before like uh, like you have like the one and two already like this right like this is like number two all of this mainly all of this is number two already and then I, I break it down again even more like like the, this number two that I drew before with the cup I just break it down again into like number one and number two what I do is like, I do a number one here. Why oh, it's not working? Okay. Number one here. Number one here. Number one here. Number one here. Like it's all together actually. This one. one. See, uh, like from the previous, like before it was one and two over here, like one like this and two over here. And then I, I go inside this shape and break it down again. But the breakdown is, is less strong. See like how the breakdown before of the big part is very strong, like this one and this one is very strong to each other. Like it's very white here and it's very dark over here. And then the breakdown between this small shape and this like area here, number two, in red. This one is less strong. So the more I'm breaking down down into small parts, the less I, 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 the contrast is for me. That's how I think. And when you mix it with like physics and theory, it happens to be about this part and this part. It happens to be a bouncing light or like a second source of light. And why I do that is just to make this one, this big shape here, that is very dark, more readable. Because like, like, even though you read a, a big dark shape, you need to understand that it's a, it's a character here and you need to see the details inside. So that's why I add another light inside, but not too strong that, because otherwise it would conflict with, the, with, the, with this white here. And even like if you go even more like deeper in, in the thing here, like in this number one, I break it down again. And uh, let's take some blue. And then you can see that like those small details here, it's like a number one again. And those outside is number two. Or it's like the step number three actually. You could, you could create the number three. Like, yeah, number three. Just memorizing from repetition. I think if uh, it's when I was talking about anatomy, right? Yeah, it's from yeah repetition. Repetition is like a good way to learn things as well. I mean, it's not the most clever way for sure, but uh, sometimes repetition rep helps you just uh, memorize things. Is there any specific franchise or story you would like to illustrate? Uh, I would say Harry Potter, but right now it's not it's not good to be fan of Harry Potter, I guess. So yeah, I don't know. Does it really matter to have Photoshop in the industry for digital illustration? Uh, for illustration, no, it's fine. You can use any software. Even in concept art, I would say you can use any software as long as you as the result is good. As I would say. It's just that uh, when you're working for 
like uh, for, for companies and stuff it's better to to give them like a psd files because like everybody is working with photoshop mainly How long will you be streaming for? Uh, I think I'm gonna be streaming for 30 minutes more, so if there's any other question. Why do you have to be so gosh darn inspiring in this game? I was trying to take a break for the weekend, but here I am drinking wine, listening to you. Oh, that's good. I'm happy for you, I guess. What do you do on the days when you don't know what to draw? When you when you don't have a story idea to tell? How do you know what to tell as a story? Uh, that's very... kind of uh, tricky, because uh, for me it's like... I think, yeah, it's more about like... Uh, like I have some uh, some uh, some times where I just like having a lot of ideas and I just keep drawing and drawing and drawing, and sometimes I have no ideas and I'm forcing myself to draw. And sometimes half of the time I can find something and I just, I just can keep going. But when I see that I can't find anything to draw, at some point I just stop. I don't I, can, I just stop forcing myself. Because it's just uh, it's uh, I mean, it's just leading you to a, it's just leading me to a burnout and uh, so I feel like if I really don't know what I want to draw it's useless to try to draw because it's just gonna be like a random or a random drawing that has no meaning so so yeah uh, like when I have nothing like I, when I have zero zero idea sometimes I just I just I just don't force it. How do you know what to tell as a story? Uh, for a story, I think it's well. I know what I want to tell because I want because it's more about like personal stories and and like having something to uh, to uh, to, um, uh, to learn to uh, for people. So I know what I want to tell, but uh, but I think it's hard for people who doesn't know what they want uh, to find a story. I guess. For me, I, I know that what kind of message I want to send to the to the viewer, so I kind of know the stories I want to do. But when you have no messages and you are just thinking about art entertainment, I think it's it's more it's more hard, I guess, or it's more like you are, you need to learn some uh, some rule about writing, I would say, which I don't have. Should the focus be finish more stuff or studying? Uh, whatever works for you, I would say. Some people will need a lot of study, like me. Some people don't need any study at all. So it's just depend on, on you. I, I'm not saying that you need to study like forever and stuff like that. But I just like like uh, just like uh, I just explained to you like the way I was working, the way I was studying. It was it was the way that was kind of working for me. It wasn't maybe the most efficient way, but it was the way that that led me to that style, that drawing style that I have right now. And I, I could see that what I was learning before, there was some mistake that I did. Like there was like bad way that I learned stuff, like the, I learned stuff the wrong way, but it's okay. It's part of my style. So that's why it's like, it just depends on you. It just depends on your choices. So you just focus on what you want to, uh, what's what you want and what you feel makes you move forward i would say will this be uploaded later i think so i think youtube just uh, uh, is it's just recording right now so hopefully it's, there's gonna be no bugs so are there are there any artists right now on social media that you would say are must follow well, it's just personal taste, but there's like uh, one guy that will recommend to everybody. One guy. Oh, I mean, uh, like if you want to be good at colors and focusing on just color picking, 
This guy. Woon Young. This guy is so good. Wait, I'm gonna give you the link. For me, it's like the like kind of the goal I want for my 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 colors and stuff. Because like he managed to like translate uh, something just with one color, and that's like the top, the high level of color picking. When you are able to pick just one color, and it's enough to make the mood of the piece. Is it? Is it you? Mm -hmm. Let me give you the link here. The link. So I would say this guy. Oops. I would say this guy is like, uh, like the past uh, two years. It was like kind of my obsession, kind of. Like, uh, like, like it's so simple, but yet so effective, like on color picking and stuff. And someone with like a, a great knowledge of light and stuff, they would say there's nothing crazy about him. He's just putting everything in the shadow and that's it. But for me, it's not about that. It's about good color picking. And that's why for me, he's, too, he's so good. Is this on laptop version or maybe doing app? Uh, what are you talking about? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm using a PC right now. Like the, the less shading you like for me, like, like when I do shading and stuff like this around here, it's about correcting a mistake. That's how I think about color. Actually, like I can do, I can go deep in that uh, area as well. Like, uh, let's take a piece, uh, this one, it's a perfect example. Like the way I I uh, I pick colors is very binary, so it's like zero one zero zero one 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 zero 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 one. So it's like when I make a choice over here, like when I have to color the the skin of this guy, I usually one I pick one color. So I will pick first the color of the light. So it's gonna be like this. Oops. Okay, like this. And then I have to pick a second color. And second color is this, is this one. You see what I... And then like, when you're watching at the, at the, like it's two flat colors. And then the theory is like, when you watch those two colors, you, you start to wonder like, is it, is it the right one? Is it the, like, did I pick the right color? The answer is like I don't know. That's the thing. It's like it feels it feels like it's working because I just make two choices for the uh, I just give two choices for the viewer. I don't see it as a light and shadow actually. I see it as as uh, options for the viewer. So the the viewer will have this color and this color here one and number two here as option for the skin. And since and since there's no shading in between here, there's no like uh, shading like this. The in between, there's a lot of guessing for the viewer. So like from this step and like from uh, one two, there's no mistake. You don't know if there's a mistake for the view. The, the viewer can tell because it's gonna make an average between those two colors the, in the in between. And what I do is like adding a third one that is like this one that will make a balance of it that will make another choice I, I just made another choice for the viewer so he doesn't have to decide so it's less it's less uh, violent to his eyes to the viewer eyes and that's what i do like like when I, i'm doing rendering it's all about correcting uh, the the color i picked on one and two because it wasn't the perfect color so like like this shape here like those shape here, that are the rendering. It's actually a correction of the color of the light here. And since it's, everything is so, uh, there's, there's no smoothing, it, everything is like hard stroke, 
the viewer is gonna make a, an average between this one and this one, like between this color here and this color here. And it's and uh, like the, like the like just doing half through like this and leaving like space for the viewer to decide what's going on in between. It's my way of uh, doing colors. So it's uh, so there's a lot of uh, openings for mistakes because everything is so decisive that uh, that the in between uh, there's a lot of room for freedom. And what I found about uh, this artist guy. The wrong way. But this guy is that just one color is enough. He doesn't need to uh, to correct anything here. For me, I, I see it like this. It's like how come you just need that flat colors to feel it like it's uh, in the light uh, and there's volumes and stuff. And uh, that's how I see it when I'm studying his work. He's like, how did he find the right color so he doesn't need to add more texture to it? And for me, it's like. Like in my style, it's like I didn't find the right color first, so I need to correct it here. I had a little bit of rendering and stuff. Do you guys have any question? Otherwise, I think I can. I think I can. Yeah, I can. I can, I can say that it's done for this session. There's no other question. Do you have an Instagram? Uh, yes, it's. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. I think you just type Nesca in Instagram and you will find. Yeah, there's the HKS. Uh, I don't know why the, why Google and Facebook puts H, HKS all the time. But, uh. Do you plan to do other streams? Uh, maybe, yeah, I was thinking of doing, about, doing one about uh, color theory. Because I think it's the only, only thing I can explain. Because anatomy is so messy, but co color is something you can explain easily. Uh, do you have any tips? Uh, uh, do you? How do you have any lines tips? Uh, yeah, I mean, for for lines. Uh, uh, for lines. Uh, like 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 when when I was explaining like uh, how I was doing illustration for me lines, the only tips I can give for like is like uh, to find a way where you can only focus about the tool and not the drawing, and uh, that's why like uh, where is the thing? Like here like like the 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 like the the step number three here. When I'm doing the clean drawing. I only I only think about line, so I only think about the thickness of my line. The drawing is already the sketch is already done. Everything is already clean. Everything is clean, and I, I'm just thinking about making beautiful lines and practice. Like the more you practice that, and the more I guess you can mix everything after. Like you can see here, like like I do the rough here. And I do the, the clean line, the clean sketch over here. And like you can see that how everything, every information is already here. Like uh, the, the, arm, the, 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 the mechanics of the, uh, the arm, like everything is already like kind of like, uh, like well defined. So when I do the, 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 the cleaning line, all I think is about the weight, the width of the line, like the size of the line. And I can only focus on that. And it's a good practice when you just want to learn the tool. Just, just retracing, I would say. Do you use G Pen tool to coloring, or 
or you use brush? Uh, I use both now. I like to use uh, a lot of G-Pen lately, actually. Because uh, one of the mistakes of a lot of, uh, of beginners when they do colors, they work with opacity, which you can do, I think. If, but uh, when, when you work with flat colors, the good thing is that uh, you have to make a choice. Like you see, like if you select like a, like a, a hard color like this for the skin, a color like this for the skin. It's it's the color you picked. But if you work with opacity, what you will end up is like like trying to put like oh, like like you see like you need a lot of strokes to get to for to where you want to to, to go. And it gets very muddy. And uh, like all those in between here like this one, like here, it's not your choice. This is your choice. This is the color you picked here. And this is a good practice to work with like a G pen, like a, a bold brush like that, that has no opacity. Because you practice just color picking. When you work with opacity like that, it's, ne it's, it's never good for color picking because you never know what is the color you are picking. You are, you are letting the tool doing the work for you. You are not thinking for, for by yourself. And that's why I like G-Pen, because uh, it helps me just like thinking about making the good choice right away. I don't spend uh, forever to do the, the like doing the, the stroke with opacity. I get the, 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 right, the right color I want right away. And I know it's hard like when you work with uh, with uh, no opacity because like I'm like oh how do you sh uh, how do you shade the stuff then and it's like you can see that even though it's like it looks like it's uh, like a good shading and stuff if you look closely it's like separated like it's like here you can see it's one color over here and there's another over here and that's it it's enough to make your shading and there's like another one here that is the transition there's like only like three three colors actually like this if I have to be like more rough. There's a tiny bit of uh, opacity, and, but uh, those three colors are a color of picked, actually, if you see what I mean. And when you unzoom, it's enough to make you feel like it's a, a good transition, you know? It doesn't have to be like a, a half move all the time. And that's how you give the feeling of painting as well, because you picked everything and you just, just like scratch everything with the right color. So you almost don't work with opacity. I only work with opacity when I, I reach uh, stage uh, stage three. Like you said, you, like you, like was like when I was explaining. Like first is like uh, blocking uh, light and shadow. First and two. But like if you go to this part, is like this is like uh, one, and here it's like number two, and then. See like how like here is like like number two, number one, and here is like number three here. But then like number three is so soft, like for uh to uh like the choice for number three is so, is so soft uh, to to number one. You see like the change is like not like if you look the the, the color well, when I color pick the, the change is uh, it's so soft here that. Like this area here, I can smooth it a bit. It's only in step three that when I start to 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 figure out why I'm gonna smooth stuff and stuff. And here, like this is smoothing as well, but you could see that there's a lot of strokes here. There's a lot of different colors. Like here, there's one color, one color, one color, and uh, and I use a brush with opacity, but most of the time it goes full opacity. And uh, it just helped help me like just ease a bit on the on the on the shading, but most of the time it's color picking. It's like twenty five percent color picking and twenty five percent shading. But see, like here, like, it's never like really like a very like perfect shading. Here it's almost like a perfect shading, but you can still see like a transition of of brush strokes and stuff.
Yeah, lately I'm using a lot of uh, Adron brush. Yeah, I'm using a lot of the, this this one actually. Like, like I'm using a lot this one. <laughs> and what I like about this one is like uh, the opacity goes uh, the the full opacity goes very fast. I don't have to press too hard to get uh, full opacity. And it's because thanks uh, Clip Studio, you can do that. Like, like you see, like here, the brush size is linear, so it's just like uh, the normal pressure. But for opacity, oh what? Who fucked up my stuff? Bing. Oh no, it's what? What? Oh, it's oh, it's this one. Yeah, my bad. It's this one. This one. So you see, like the 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 size pressure is linear. But when I go to opacity, I just need to put half of my strength to reach the half of my strength to to reach full opacity. So it's way more easier to to to, to do like some color picking and tiny bit of shading. So I don't spend time forever to to reach the full opacity. And I'm using uh, the Intuos skin paint. Will you eventually create comics or stories with your original characters? Yes, I guess at some point I have to, because it's my main goal, and uh, I've been putting that on hold forever now, so I need to get back to it. Do you know Lix Ting Ying on Instagram? He is using a lot of hard run, uh, a lot of hard round brush. I don't, uh, I don't think, maybe I know him. Let me check quickly. Let me check quickly. Quickly, quickly. Oh, yeah, I never, no, I don't, uh, actually, I don't know his work. It's nice, though. What is the huge difference between man face and woman? Ooh, that's a tough question because, like, the way I draw face for woman is not, I'm not the best at drawing face so, for women, actually. Uh, for me, there's no answer to that because, um, like, uh, like a, a woman could have a man face as well and it can still be a woman as well. Like, there's so many code outside right now saying that. Uh, a woman's face would be more thin and more round and stuff like that. And I just think that is not true. And, uh, so yeah, I don't have the answer for that. I'm just doing whatever. I can make a square face and make it feel like it's a woman for me. Like uh, this character over here is like... Uh, uh, do I have the drawing? Like this character over here is like a very... Like scary face, and it's like for me, it's still a girl for me. Uh, so I don't know. I think there's, I've, I just took it from experience, like from drawing outside, just drawing people and trying to fill the characters. I just found that people have so many different shapes, and uh, and some people that kind of look like kind of like guys and are women and stuff, and there's just like some small subtlety that you need to add to make it feel like it's a woman and stuff that you need to learn by yourself. I think. How do you create create a balance between backgrounds and characters so both fits co cohesively? Um, that's a good question. Most of the time, even after ten years, fifteen years of drawing, I still don't like drawing backgrounds. So it's all about taste, and most of the time, characters will take eighty percent or seventy five percent of the illustration. So as so it feels less painful for me to do background. It's it's just about taste for me. But like you can see here, is like you see those two characters. It's like almost taking like it's taking like about sixty percent of the illustration, even seventy five. I would say this one is the same. Like uh, it's like the character is taking so much room 
but uh, that uh, I have less pain uh, during the background. So it feels like it looks so everything feels like it's, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. And this one is more difficult, I would say, because I think it was, I just wanted to fix more, uh, more challenge to myself. So I wouldn't say I, I, I had fun like totally on this one, maybe 50% fun on this one. So it's not about it's it's more about like what you want to tell and what you like to, to, to do. If you don't like to draw backgrounds, you don't have to draw backgrounds if you want. You can just keep it and like just draw like 80% character. You there's always a way to draw 80% uh, characters in your illustration. But it's I find it's always good to, to to put a little bit of what you don't like so you you're still learning something from your illustration. Y a-t-il une technique pour mieux appréhender les couleurs? Uh, so the question is: Is there a way to uh, to understand color? Is there a technique to understand color? Uh, the only, like the way I learn colors is just through observation and trying to make uh, my own theory. I literally like like looked looked a bit like how light is working. So from that, I just made my own theory. So like for like the, like I remember like one teacher told me like the, the like uh, like to watch like to look at the at the white white wall like just what uh, just look at your wall and try to see colors on it and uh, that's what differentiates like a good artist to, uh, to a non artist like a non artist guy would just see white and uh, like a, an artist that has like a lot of experience he will see a lot of colors in the white. Uh, in the, in the white uh, surface, because like uh, the way the, the 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 lights work, let's say this is a this is light. Like light is going in that direction. Oh, I'm giving a good example. So let's say like the light is over here, going over here like this. The thing is, the light is white. You see, like everybody saying the light is white, but the white of the light is composed of every colors of all the colors. So like the white is composed of this colors, this color, this one, and there's like infinite. I'm just like giving you like a small small amount of it, and all those colors together is making a white light. And that's the 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 hot theory of of light. And the way it bounces on uh, on uh, on an object. That's how that's how you you pick the color, and that's how you you like you you un, like you you understand things, how you see colors. So let's say I have a, a blue square. Like this. The thing is that this light here, it's white. And this blue surface is going to absorb all just the blue, all the blue from it. And that's how you pick the. So that's why, like, you see some artists doing a few dashes of of red stuff like that here, like like this, like like few dashes like that. It makes the thing like kind of shiny, you know, like this. The reason why like you can do that in the blue is because once the light is like uh, reflecting on the object it's absorbing the blue but then like all those colors here are still there so you can break it down into like uh, like in an artsy way that is brush strokes and like you can just put some yellow of dash because they because this the yellow is part of the blue still like, of that light still and that's how it works you, you just break down the light instead of having like a, a, a billion of light all together. Artists, what, what they do is like breaking those down. And what I'm seeing, like, like uh, watching a, a white wall is, is good, is because if you are good at seeing like a lot of different colors in a white wall, you start to be good at, uh, at picking different colors that will make it feel like blue or green, even though you're using red and stuff like that. You just need to train your eyes to see like colors in a way that you shouldn't see it. 
like like I'm looking at, at the white wall right now, and I can see like some blue, a bit of green and red, and it's and it takes time from that. It's easy, and uh, you just need to practice to to see like colors you don't see. There's always a lot of different colors. And master is about breaking down those colors, like separating uh, this light into pieces, just breaking this, those colors into pieces. Everything about realizing an art book? Nope, no art book for me. You do so much backgrounds, I'm surprised you don't like it. Well, backgrounds have telling stories. So I have to do it because I enjoy telling stories. Can you give some quick insights on how you approach character design? Uh, I'm not sure I am the best one for that because character design is not my thing. I'm much more in, into the story than character design. And uh, the way I will teach you character design is more like as a personal way than uh, and a way you learn for like concept to be a concept artist or something. So I'm not sure you will get like something professional out of it. Do you ever animate? No, I don't know how to animate. It's uh, very hard to, for me, I think. What are your thoughts on peeps getting tattoos of your work? I don't have any thoughts, but. Uh... I think they should pay me actually, but uh, but yeah, I guess uh, now we are we are in a time where uh, people doesn't care about copyright, so I don't know. I wouldn't make much that much of a of a deal though. But if you if you think the right way, I think you you should pay the artist at least <laughs> and ask him as well. <laughs> ask the permission at least. Ask the permission first, and uh, maybe uh, paying him a bit because like yeah, he he worked on it. I don't know, but yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, like nowadays, uh, I, I, I won't, I, I won't like be uh, angry at him, but uh, at the guy, but uh, yeah. Do you work as a freelance? No, right now I'm just full time uh, in a studio. Do you use one brush for background as well? Yeah, I use like only like two brushes uh, when I do colors actually. Three brushes. I use uh, the flat, uh, the, the flat uh, colors like this. The flat brush I use like this. So it helps me like giving a direction and stuff. Like uh, it helps me like doing shape easily. Because when you have a square, like a, a, a rectangle, like a, a rectangle shape. Oh, shit. When you have a rectangle shape like this. It's easier to define corners because the, the brush is already doing it for you. And when you have one brush like this, like everything is going to every direction. So it's hard to make shape. So you have to draw the shape uh, by yourself when you have like a round brush. But uh, that's why I like, I like this brush, the flat one. And I'm using uh, the G pen. I just like using this one uh, lately, just to, uh, to feel shape actually. <laughs> Just to fill it. And I use uh, this one as well with a little bit of opacity. So I can add a little bit more shading when I'm like uh, in the, the final stage. And I can do shading with the flat one as well. But it, I have to go like very light. And like this one is more like about uh, uh, mixing colors. Like it mixing, it's mixing colors, you see. And this one is more like opacity. See? This one is like it's mixing everything together, but in a in a painting way. Like you you still see like the strokes and stuff. That's why I like it. It's the only free brush I use for for painting. But lately I, I I'm using the flat brush less and less. I'm I'm just going simple with the the G pen, the hard run, and the, the run opacity. I don't know why. I guess I'm getting more simple and simpler with time.
I'm personally interested in getting something done. Do you have a place where I can donate? Well, uh, maybe you should send me the, the one you want to do first to, to be sure that uh, you can do it, I guess. Because sometimes, you know, if there's copyright as well, because it, sometimes the drink doesn't belong to me, it's already belonging to a company or something. I need to be sure, I need to, like, you know, need to be sure about that. So yeah, if you can send it to me, uh, I don't know where, but uh, maybe uh, the link of the drink you want uh, on, the, I don't know, on the, maybe on Instagram you can contact me. I'm very hard to contact, but I... Uh, Tips for learning anatomy. Uh, I already give some tips. I'm mean, not real tips, but the way I was like how I was learning anatomy uh, just before. So if you watch the stream uh, uh, back a bit, uh, you can you can still you can you can find out the, the answer. What brush do you use for line arts? I use this one. Uh, for line arts, uh, for sketching, I use a, I use a round brush. With no with opacity, but no, uh, no uh, there's no there's, there's no pressure with the size. So I, I just focus on uh, on designing my stuff and not on the, on the on the width of the on the side of on the size of the line. Exception. This. And then uh, when I do the cleaning, I ever use this brush again if I want to give like a, a more gray feeling, you know. Or I use the G pen at uh, 0 0.8 uh, millimeter here. Yeah. It's very simple. I, I don't use any fancy brush. It's like very, it's just a hard run brush. I just like this brush because like it has a sensitivity like this. That makes feels like it's very heavy. What makes a good character design for you? Uh, I would say shape, uh, storytelling behind a bit, and, uh, and that's it. But uh, yeah, I, I, like I, I don't want to give any uh, advice on character design because I have a very different way uh, of thinking from the industry. So I don't want you guys to design stuff that uh, that won't fit uh, for the for the industries. What is the most important thing you haven't talked about today? The most important thing I didn't talk about is style. Like how to have your own style, and I wanted to make a. I guess I wanted to talk about it, but it's so messy. Like I'm not sure I would be clear, so I need to uh, to work on that a little bit more, and uh, so I could explain vibes and stuff. It's not even even about French. Uh, it's about like uh, like it's so complicated to explain uh, everything clearly when it's about style. And I saw so many videos people explain uh, like how what is a style and it's just bothering me because it's not true to me. It's uh, it's 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 all wrong to me. So so I want to make a good video about that for sure. Because uh, yeah, and uh, the way of I would say this topic, the style and the way of learning. I see a lot of video lately about learning fast, learning fast. It's all wrong for me. It's all, all wrong. And uh, I just want to make a video. About I'm not saying that they are wrong. I mean, they are wrong. It's a truth in a way. But for me, it doesn't have to be that way if you want to be good. And it feels like when I saw this video, it's just like forcing everybody to, to learn things fast and be fast at everything. And uh, yeah, I, yeah I, I, I want to make a video about that as well. Because like, the, like this video, like how to be clever at learning, how to learn like from your mistake more faster and stuff like that. And yeah, it doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that.
for me it's important to do mis it's important to do mistakes and uh, find your way of learning slow or fast or efficient or not that's what it makes that's what it, that, that's what makes you at the end and uh, yeah i can see people drawing very slow and uh, like after like 20 years of learning and uh, they got their own thing after 20 years and that's the thing like if you rush thing in, in two years maybe you will get good but will you get the the thing that is you 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 i'm not sure it's all about choices at the end but yeah Are you planning to do a portfolio review or art critic? Or art critic? Uh, no, I, I did some portfolio reviews at CTN and stuff. I try to be the most objective possible. But what I don't like about portfolio reviews or monitoring people is that I'm leading someone in one direction, and I don't like that. I want people to find their own way. And like, like, like the like the, the thing I'm doing right now is just about tips. I'm just giving like uh, some uh, some of my vision, but I'm not directly guiding someone to somewhere. So you can do whatever from that, from what I'm giving. But once I start to judge judge someone's work, I feel like I'm being intrusive to his work. I'm like, oh, you should do it that way. I think it's better like this, and it's probably better like the way I was, I'm thinking. But the way he's thinking, maybe it's not working at all. So I I don't want to interfere in, in that way. It's just me. I don't want to uh, influence people too much uh, directly. Do you prefer drawing or painting? Well, drawing, because I don't know how to paint. Like the way I just explained to you how I did color and stuff, it's coloring. Like everything you say is just coloring. It's not painting. It's coloring. Like the way I just like so showed you uh, the way I work. It's coloring things. It's like putting numbers on shapes. Like you know, like uh, when you were a kid, you had like some uh, some drawings with numbers, and you just had to put the right color with the right number. I'm doing the same. Exactly the same. And this is not painting. This is coloring. I'm trying to read all the questions. I feel like I'm skipping a lot, so. Did you work as a freelance before? Uh, yes, I was freelance before Blizzard. What's your process on anatomy? Well, I can... Explain it to you in 10 minutes what I do. When I draw something, a character, it's never about anatomy. It's about shape. It's about um, being the most stupid as possible. Like how like a, a non-artist would understand a figure. It's all about like tubes and stuff. But when I'm doing a character, it's all about. See? There's no real anatomy. Like, I'm just thinking, like, oh, this is a harm. But it has to be like a long tube like this. And it has to be like another long tube like this. And like, it's same for the leg. Oops, it's too big. Sorry. Same for the leg, it's another tube. It's another tube like this. I go in a very straightforward way of un of understanding. Everything has to be like very clear uh, for, uh, for, for like as a view uh, as a non artist guy. It almost feels like uh, I'm doing stick uh, stick figure, and that's it. I start with that, and then after that, I start to think about. What could make a good shape? And of course, there's already like a bit of shape in it because, like, with experience, I just know how to to refine the stuff a bit more. 
and uh, and then I start to add more fury. Like I'm like, okay, this is the neck, like this, and I know that the, the I don't know how you create the uh, the the, uh, the trapezius is like this, and there's like an ellipse like this that makes the neck like this. And then, like by like by seeing a lot of pictures of shoulders and stuff, I know that the shape has to be like a bit like this. And the same thing, it's like all about memory after that. I remember like the the, the shape of the the arms should be like this from like a lot of studies. And then I'm like, oh, this is wrong. I'm like in volumes, it should be like more like behind, like, starting to be like this. And it is like about like a mix of like uh, uh, trying to see in space and uh, and uh, and through memories, like the shape I, I just like uh, have in my head, like memorized from studies. And then after that. It's only after that I'm, I start to, to try to figure out the volume actually. So I'm like, oh, like how does this shape working uh, in, in 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 3D? Like 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 like, like, like yeah, like I'm I'm trying to understand 100% how it works in space. So I'm starting to like try to see if, uh, like I'm not doing the construction, but like uh, like uh, just vi visualize the thing. Like I'm like, okay, this is gonna be like this. This is gonna make this an ellipse like this for the for the anatomy here. That's how I see it after. But I don't, I don't draw it though. I'm just trying to see like if I can feel it in my, with my eyes. It's like uh, when you work in 3D, like trying to do the topology. It's like I'm just trying to do the topology. And that's the way I'm, I'm working colors actually. This is the state when I, like, when I do the colors, that's where I'm trying to see the volumes actually. It's like, Like I'm like from this I'm I'm like I'm I'm trying to see the topology of the of the of the arm. Oh, I'm like oh yeah maybe I like there's a topology like this. See like, see like this, let's say I make a grid like this. It's very uh, it's very rough and random. But let's say you have a topology like this, very simple. I can I can break it down even more. Be like this, like this. Like this, oh, this should be like it actually. Like, let's say I break down the topology like this. And now all I need to do is feeling the stuff. It's like, uh, like I told you, it's like putting numbers and feeling the curves. So when I have the shadow, Like this, uh, the light, I mean, coming from like this. I know that this is like where it's gonna be hundred percent light. This is gonna be uh, maybe eighty percent light, and this is gonna be fifty uh, percent light. So I'm like, okay, and I try to find the one two. So the one two, it can either be here. Or here, or here, like in the middle, and this is all about like after it's about uh, making an interesting shape as well at the same time, but like like trying to see things like uh, like with topology like this can help you as well. So like I'm like okay, I'm gonna start like putting this number one like this, the shadow here, and I know that that topology here. It's gonna be darker anyway. Like that. It's too strong. But see, like here, like since it's tilting a little bit more, this is not gonna be hundred percent light. So I need to uh, to shift it a little bit more. Red topology. This is oh, this is like another angle. It changed the angle again. So I need to to change the, the light again a bit more. It's all about thinking as a three D at the same time. And what I do is like a mix of that and a mix of shape at the same time. 
And what I do actually, like, like I show you, like a, a like a kind of like real topology of a, of the shape. What I do is uh, inside this shape here, I do a deformation of the topology. So it's not it's not gonna fall like this or like this or like this. So when I do like a flat uh, the color, see so I, I I go very shapey already. So what what did I do? What I do is like like so a topology that is like this actually. See, and it's all wrong. It's it's not. It's 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 not the shape of the shoulder. It's not even the shape of the shoulder. I can even more try to refine a bit more. Like this. And then like it's all wrong and then I tried to yeah I, I just corrected I corrected the this thing with adding more topology to it. Like one more here, one more here and stuff. And then I will add some a little bit more. That is the correction. But the fact that I I I kind of like made the topology uh, that doesn't follow the volume. What I did instead is making interesting shape. So here is like like see like this shape here. This shape here. See what it does here, this one? It does like a shape like this. And then a shape like this. Like. And same for here is like almost like this. Like it's getting bigger like this. Like, like it's getting bigger like this. Everything is kind of, uh, of, of, uh, inter like is a, is a mixture of like interesting shape and the topology that could work in that space. And since the, the topology is wrong, I just need to correct it a little bit more and adding, adding a little bit more topology to it. So like I can just add a little bit more topology like this here. I can even refine the topology like that here. So I just do like an in-between between those two. So I need to find an in-between between those two like this. So yeah, it's it's funny that uh, like I was learning 3D uh, two weeks ago and uh, it was exactly the same way I was thinking when I was coloring. I was like, oh, it's crazy. So now it's, I find it's easier for me to explain colors like that, like as a 3D character, as a 3D person. So yeah, that's how I tackle anatomy most of the time. It's not about what what I know perfectly, it's about how how good I, I am at, at guessing and making 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 you believable. So the like the, the 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 drawing of the of the arm first is a good ring, it's the good shape, and what's inside the shape is not hundred percent accurate, but it gives you a sense of interesting shape and volumes at the same time. So it's okay to not know everything for me. And just play like with the shape around it. So like I think my knowledge in anatomy is about like I don't know forty percent. I don't know that much. And just like tricking you with the fact that uh, I I memorize the shape of the arms by a lot of studies, and then adding a theory of three D, my own theory of three D and uh, and shape and color to make it believable is enough. And this, that's why for me it's hard to teach anatomy because. Uh, I don't know the real function of each things. It's just about a mix of observation and uh, and uh, and my own theory. What do you think should be the first thing someone should learn when start to study drawing? Ah, ah I don't want to influence too much, but. I found that uh, learning about ellipses was the the biggest thing for me. I would say understanding ellipses was uh, a, a a big step forward for me when I was uh, learning drawing. Like, uh, cause like just what ellipses give you the the information for everything. Like, like it gives you the direction, 
like this because you have to cut in half this ellipsis to have the direction so you have the direction of the tube and how strong the ellipse is here is how strong the you see it in 3D like like this see see how like so understanding ellipses is like like it's like one of the big jump uh, for me to understand things in volumes because just by drawing like 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 you see like these things that that, that has uh, no sense uh, in that sketch i just have to draw like a bunch of ellipses ellipses and uh, it gives direction to everything like oh, here we are just from that i can guess everything i can guess the camera i can guess uh like I can guess the perspective because like just like giving the, that direction, I know that the camera is gonna be on top here, and uh, yeah, the camera is gonna be on top here. The perspective is gonna be like this, like just from ellipses. And the more I'm getting close to the camera, it's like the less the, the more the ellipses is gonna get, it's gonna get smaller. So ellipses is like a big mess for me to understand. From that, you can do everything after, I guess. Can you show a little bit of this topology process at face features like nose and mouth? Uh, yeah, let me. I, I just need to find the perfect piece. Uh, for, uh. I don't want to show you one that has too much uh, rendering. Do you have any resources to learn complex perspective? Well, there's a lot of book about that. I'm sure you can find one. Uh, I gave one uh, earlier. It's uh, this one. I can give the link again. It's not. It's, it's a very. What I like about this one is like a, it's a very small book. It's not too complex. Let me find a trend for the topology of the face. I never do like a big face face. Mm. I'm trying to find pieces that uh, that won't get uh, me banned from YouTube. So. Okay, let's use this one. It's okay. I guess it's not the, the best option, but let's, let's use this. Oh. Wait, it's not working. <laughs> this one or this guy face uh, I'm gonna resize a bit more this way is, is, is interesting because the the cheek is uh, is uh, is is having food. I mean, there's there's a bump in the in the cheek. But see here, like how I define, like, like how I would see the topology for, with that, is with the the shape I created with the with uh, with the outside shape of everything. That's why I'm just like trying to around everything. So like you see the shape of the noise here. 
So we're always trying to find a shape that will make an interesting topology. So like I will always like pick the corner of this edge here and try to make a, a direction out of it. So that's why like you see like a square like this. Even though I think it should be like if you have to follow the real volume for that, I would have more like doing like I, I would have more like doing it like this. If you see what I mean. So that's how I cut it. Like I'm just, like one topology like this. Like that's how I would, one for here like this, one line like oh, more thing. Like this. Then like this. I saw the best example also. But see how like uh, every time I try to cut like a part, like uh, for me it's like uh, there's a big part, like like this is like one part for me, like this one. So I will always try to break it down into three. So it's like one, two, three. And then those sides are always can they always try to be like interest, like uh, like interesting. They, they are never the same size. And I do the same about that. Like you see, like you have an instrument like this. This one is more long. And when I take the nose, I do the same. I try to break in break it into three as well. This one is more complex though, but uh, like I would say, like uh, that's why I, I'm merging this one together and like this. We have like one, two, three. The same for the noise here. Like this, like one, two, three. That's how like all my style is about breaking down stuff. So we're always breaking down some parts into three pieces. You see like there's a lot of like, I always like say one, two, three a lot it's because I'm breaking down everything into three steps. All the time. And you can see it like, like here, like in the shadow over here, like, see, it's like broken into one, two, three. And uh, like, I, 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 like uh, in the sketch I did just before, I, I, I showed you that I was breaking it, breaking it down like this, bigger. And it's okay, it's the same, it's, it's, it, it will be correct anyway, because uh, since everything is half stroke and not shading, you will make an average of it. And so that's why I, I, it's easier for you to find good shapes when you're just doing hard stroke like that and no shading. Because no matter the size, people will make the average of it. So you just need to find some interesting shape that feels like it's a volume. Like this is the same like here and stuff. It doesn't follow the volume perfectly actually. Because, yeah, I, I, like, even here, there should be, like, a, a light like this. If I, like, like if I'm all about, like, a half, a half curve theory, like, the light here, this light should be like this, actually. It's, all I do is, like, a kind of, like, a, like simplify my topology. It should be more like this, actually. But you see, like, like depending on your style, like how busy it gets for nothing. Like you have so many spikes, I'm like, bleh, bleh, bleh. too much. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it's not good. I mean, it's, it doesn't fit my simplification. It's still working, but the way I see it, it's like too busy. It's too spiky. And uh, with like, it's a lot of like experience and uh, like with time, like you, you will find a good shape that will feel like makes you feel like it's in volume and it's an interesting shape at the same time. And I do that I do that a lot for everything. Like even that here, like on the face of the girl. Like this shape here is so wrong. It's so wrong in the volume. It doesn't follow the volume. It's impossible to get that kind of shading because like her face, her cheek is so round. It's supposed to be round. Like it's like on, on this piece, 
it's round. I did it round. And here, like the way I simplify it is uh, just trying to find the right amount of uh, of shape that that will make things interesting. Let's see here, this one. See how like the number one is big and number two is big, uh, is smaller. That's how I do the topology. I'm like, okay, this is like maybe the, the real topology of the face that is like more breakdown like this, you know, like it's more breakdown like this. But then I'm like, okay, but I don't want to have four square. I want to have topology of only two. So I need to delete some. So I'm deleting those, those. But I'm like, oh, the placement of this one is like not the best. It's like touching the eyes and stuff. And it's going to make some tangent and it's not good. So I'm like, oh, then I'm just going to move the points here. And that's it. The, the, the topology of those two is here. That's how I think uh, in my head, I would say. It's about simplifying the, the topology and try to find the right placement to make it feel it's good. And the thing is that since it's a 2D art, you can cheat a lot with that. It doesn't have to follow some, like, uh, some, uh, some specific position. You just, you just need to find yours that fits your style. 3D is more tri when you do 3D, it's more tricky because uh, it has to be in volumes anyway. So you have to pick the right, the right one. And when it's 2D, you can cheat because it's flat, so you can place it kind, kind of like randomly, if you want. So yeah, that's the trick for the face. I'd like to know how you pick your color. I think I'm going to keep uh, that for our next, uh, next uh, stream, for the next stream maybe, so we can talk about it. Uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, because like I think I need like two hours for that. You got no idea on how helpful that lightning is being in this live stream. Uh, I'm glad it's helping you. The lower draw is so hard to draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For women, I would say it's kind of hard. So the goal is to find how to mix believable and aesthetic. Yeah, it's. I mean, it depends on 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 you. I'm not saying that it's the way to do it because some people just like to like doing like a realistic style, and it's fine as long as you like it. Just find something that you like. And uh, what I found is just, I just like to simplify stuff. Because uh, one, I'm lazy at learning now. So I don't want to learn more anatomy. Uh, two, uh, it's like simplification, it makes things more easier to read. When, uh, when you, and uh, since like everybody is reading uh, like your illustration so fast nowadays, I don't see the point of like doing so much illustration, uh, so much rendering. But that's just personal taste though. And uh, free, the, sati the satisfaction is, is faster. I finish things faster. Like I told you, like satisfaction is like something important to me. I need to feel uh, happy about a piece and fast. It's like social media, like all the tricks that they are doing to you for to, to keep you on social media. For me, it's the same for illustration. I need, to keep me during, I need to be satisfied very fast. So that's why like simplifying stuff, it's, uh, it's the good, it's, 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 my, it's my thing. And even though I simplify, I, I still love to add a lot of, of details that are like too much. So, but yeah, it's I guess it's a balance of both. So the advice is uh, as long as it looks good, go for it. Yeah, I would say that. But uh, as long as you are OK with it, uh, I would say. As long as you are happy with it, not if it looks good, because there's, there's there's a lot of drawing styles that uh, doesn't have that that sense of shape and sense of technique, and still and and they are still very good to me. 
because they are okay with it. They, 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 are, they are living, like they, they are living through it. So it's, it's okay. It's not only about techniques sometimes. I mean, it's the, the, like, like uh, when you are doing something, it's, it's, it's to see how far you want to understand things and uh, how far do you need, uh, how much do you need for what you want to do. And uh, I was always a, pr a pragmatic guy and I always learned things that was useful for me. Once I saw that it was useless for, for my end goal, I, did, I, I, I wasn't learning it, learning it. So like everything that was animation, I was like, yeah, I want to be a comic artist. I don't need to learn animation. So I never learned how to like, uh, like to do like the in between or like how to animate, or I never tried to learn like, uh, like painting as well. And, uh, it's the same for concept art. I, I never wanted, uh, I never wanted to be a concept artist. So I never tried to learn like, uh, like how to draw for, uh, for someone. For, for, for a 3D artist, because when you do, when you make concept art, you are not the end, you are not you are not the the the, the final result. You are the, the the middle of the you are in the middle of the pipeline. So it's, so concept art is very different. So you, you need to learn different things than uh, than doing like illustration, because illustration you are the, the the final result. It's fine if uh, if some part uh, people like uh, so it's not it's rough or something. But when you do concept art, everything has to be clear. Or the, for the other guy that will uh, that, that will work on your piece. Can you please make your rant about style today? Uh, this is gonna take too much time. Let's 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 keep it for another video. How long does it usually take for you to do an illustration? Uh, from one to two days, full days though, and like it's like uh, like like uh, ten or twelve hours a day, even fourteen hours, fourteen hours sometimes. So it can take a week if I'm only like working, uh, if I'm only working like three hours a day on it. You know, we work and stuff. I can only have like five hours left in a day, so it takes like maybe four days. But if in full days, it, I would say two day, from one to two days. Or I try to uh, to do it like to, from one to two days because after two days I get bored of, of the piece. But sometimes yeah, I have pieces that takes like five days. Please do more streams like this if you have the time. Yeah, I think about it. So I, like uh, I like to do videos from time to time, but I don't want to be like uh, I don't want to do videos all the time for sure. I, I still want to draw. Them. Can you explain how to develop an emotion in drawing? This is so hard because uh, for me, uh, every, my, my style is so so stiff and 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 shapey at the same time. So it's kind of because like I never go with like a very big uh, big exaggeration on the face apart from this apart from those character I would say. So, so it's very hard for me like to convey emotion. It's not only about the faces and stuff, because since I'm I, I'm coming like like I said I, I was running for to be a comic artist and animation is all about how you tell your story as well. It's how it's how you do your composition, like uh, like for the feeling for me it's like thing there's like so many different points you need. So there's like composition. Timing. And uh, the drawing. And I would say that my style is about... I mean, drawing, it's mean... Uh, I would say I would bring the... No, it's more like... It's more like the pose. And then... The facial, the facial expression. And for me, it's like a, a mix of everything here. And your question is more like, uh, like most of people will think that this one is the most important, which is true, because uh, the face is the most important. But since uh, I'm not that good at like making like exaggerate expression, 
80 of the like I would say 80 percent of the rock is is no I would say like 60 percent of the rock is this for me for me not for uh not for everybody but it's not the true like it's not like a, a hardcore rule and this one is more about like maybe uh I don't know I'm just trying to guess right now yeah 20 percent uh, maybe 25 percent yeah I'm very bad at posing as well so and this is 50 percent and the thing is that there's always way to trick the reader and that's what I'm doing I'm always tricking the uh, it's okay I'm not good at facial uh, facial expression uh, I'm just gonna compensate with that with with this one and it's all about like what you want to improve and when and how you can compensate compensate and that's that's what I'm doing all the time I'm like okay I'm not good at expression do I want to improve it now I'm like no so let compos let let's do let, let's compensate this uh, this this lack of experience in in facial expression with working more the the composition and timing and a little bit more the position as well in the and it's it's yeah it, like to, to to produce a feeling there's so many ways and uh, like sometimes like someone will just like spend like ninety percent of uh, of his thing on that this is ninety percent or some like. And this is like, like ten percent, and that's it. It depends on what you are good and what you want to like. Yeah, it depends on a lot of factor. But you have to know that those those four for me, they they, they are they are they, they are a good uh, a good factor for uh, for playing with how you want the the viewer to feel about the piece and the emotion that uh, the character is giving and stuff. Uh, timing, uh, what is timing exactly? Timing is more for comics. So I can, maybe I can find something about that. I have a perfect example actually, but uh, uh, yeah, you need to read the story though, I think. Uh, so this is like a, a good timing over here. Like those three panels here on the right, it's all about timing. And uh, like, see, like, how the face is just blank, and the guy is saying uh, he's trying to make a joke about the parent, they are dead, and everything. Uh, like explaining things to the girl, like why uh, the parent, uh, his par uh, his parents are dead and stuff. And the girl is like sh kind of shocked. And then there's another guy saying that, oh, I didn't know that your parents were dead and stuff like that. And like, just like the way I did the composition, those three frames, and the timing, it just it just induces a joke and uh, and just making a joke with no like just not just giving like a minimal with the facial expression is what i'm calling timing and composition and see like i didn't draw the mouth i just drew the eyes which is enough it's, it's, it's like spending spending like just 10 percent on the expression because like all this is like the work is like yeah, it's like you can feel like sixty. It's it's uh, seventy percent of composition and, and timing, and expression is the is it's not the the, the 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 biggest thing. And then you jump into the other page and uh, and then you have the the joke still going on and stuff. So yeah, that's why like timing is is important as well uh, for comics for emotion and composition. The way you read the thing, like in three blocks like this, will give a. a uh, another sense of emotion. Do you apply these simplification rules when you are con conceiving character design? How do you think that doesn't matter the amount of details? The the the, the amount of details. An original character. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get too deep into character design because for me, this yeah, I don't want to get into. That. Did you go to art school uh, and do clients ask you? Uh, I went to an art school for six months and I quit after that because 
because I was kind of disappointed uh, uh, from the school. It was still a good school and still a good experience, but uh, but I was learning more by myself than uh, from the school, so I just quit it. But there was a lot of interesting people over there, and I learned more about art style and more like uh, or how to be artsy and stuff like that. Because I was very, they said, very normal about drawing before. Uh, very realistic. I want to switch from Photoshop to Clip Studio. Do you have any tips so I can make the switch easier? It's not gonna be easy. Dave. It's not gonna be easy. Like, like uh, Clip Studio. Before Clip Studio, I was using Corel Painter, and it took me a good six months, maybe one year, to switch completely from uh, Carpenter to uh, Clip Studio. So it takes time, I would say. Because like, like you know, you have some, you have your Photoshop habits and the stuff that you still like in Photoshop. And, uh, and then you found that there's some stuff that you like in Clip Studio. You start to work a little bit more on Clip Studio, but there's not exactly everything that you have from Photoshop. And uh, that's the problem uh, with like people who want to transition from one software to another. They're expecting to have like all the best option the best new options on Clip Studio, but still have Photoshop at the same time. And it's never gonna happen. It's, you have to think as a di complete different software, uh, as a complete different software, even though there's a lot of similitude between those and it takes time to transition for me. It's like, you need to try, like you need just like do a little bit of Clip Studio, a little bit of Photoshop, a little bit of Clip Studio. And then maybe in long term, you will find something that will satisfy you in Clip Studio. And if it doesn't, maybe you can just switch between those two. I, I know some people who are, who are doing both, you know, so it's fine. Just whatever works for you. One downside of digital art is that you have way too many options, so it's very easy to get lost in them. Nah, don't worry, it's the same for traditional. I was the same with traditional. I was like, should I use a, a, a pencil for the final? Should I use a, a brush? Should, should I use that? What kind of, like, like, I was always wondering about technique anyway, it's the same. Like, what kind of uh, painting should I use? And, you know, how do I, should I use it? What kind of, what, like, should I go watercolor? Should I go oil painting? There's really anything in traditional as well, don't worry. Clip Studio don't have Liquify. Do you use anything alternative for it or did you never need it from the beginning? Well, I just re I, I just redraw most of the time. I don't use the Liquify thing. I, I mean, you can have the, the mesh transform, the, the mesh transform, like uh, that I use sometime. Or let me see if I can find something like here. Like, you know, you can just like mesh transform, use the mesh transform like this. And uh, I think it's not the same as Liquify though. So you, like, you add more points to it like this. And then you can just like, give, like kind of liquefy the piece. Okay. But most of the time, I just rework the piece. I just like to correct everything manually. I'm kind of like very old school about those kind of stuff. Uh, like when I have to uh, to to correct the color, I just correct it manually. So it can take t takes times when I do a mistake. Ça fait un moment que je te suis, Kim. Vraiment plaisir de te voir donner de l'aide à ceux qui sont curieux. Yes, de temps en temps, mais pas tout le temps. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's gonna be the stream's gonna. I think it's gonna be recorded for sure. How did you get your job at the big studios? I think it's another question that uh, that we need to skip, or because uh, I I guess I'm one of the few who uh, uh, who are lucky. I would say, like I didn't work. I, I'm not looking for work actually. I never look for work. I'm I'm only interested in drawing for me. And uh, the work is is just coming to me, so so yeah, I'm not a good example to follow. I cannot give a good advice on how to to be uh, 
at, in, in, in big studios and stuff. I just do what I like and, some, and sometimes I have uh, job opportunities and that's it. But uh, yeah, if I was me, 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 uh, if I didn't have to, to get money and stuff, I would just draw for myself forever. The secret is to work a lot. Yeah, depends on on, uh, on your uh, uh, on your level. Because I know there's a lot of people who uh, who doesn't need to work a lot. So it just depends on on you. I know that there's a lot of people saying that you need to work a lot and stuff. But the, some people they are too good and then they don't think very quickly and they don't they don't need to work that much actually. It's fine. It's life. For me, I didn't need to work a lot. So. For sure. But but I feel like some people who can like learn very fast and and don't work a lot, uh, a lot uh, still still valuable anyway for me. It's part of their style and stuff, so it's fine. Yeah, it's it's sad, but it's uh, it's challenging at the same time, so it's uh, it's funny. They are like the you know like in mangas and stuff. They are that character that they are that powerful from right from the beginning, and you are the 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 the, the main character in the shonen, and, and you practice for like a lot throughout like a, like nine hundred chapter just to get to his uh, to his level. So it's about I feel it's about the same. At the end, you you will get uh, you will get to the same level, even though it takes you twenty years or not. And I feel like it's more interesting when you are slow, because uh, it feels like you are experiencing more stuff. Because okay. yeah, when someone knows things quickly, uh, sometimes they don't have time to experience some stuff. That uh, yeah, it's it's just a different experience for me. Uh, actually, I'm gonna stop the stream in uh, in ten minutes. So if there's one last question, uh, I can answer it because I feel like I've been streaming for a while now. I don't like uh, like for two hours or something. And uh, it's kind of tiring because uh, yeah, speaking English is not my uh, my main language, so it's kind of hard on my brain right now. Of oh, as shit. Too much. I think mean, yeah, like I should I should try to keep the session at two hours maximum. I think you already asked that question. What do you think should be the first thing someone should learn when stop to study the journey? I was like saying that ellipsis. I think I already answered your question. It was like uh yeah, it was about ellipses. Like, uh, like for me, the first thing is ellipses. Where did I lost my? Yeah, ellipses. Like I was explaining. I mean, it depends on your style for sure. Some people don't need ellipses depending on your style that you want. But ellipses is a good way to understand volume. I mean, you can still watch the video back and see uh, what I said for, about ellipses. But yeah, get some information about that. It's very, like you will see that it's, it's gonna help you a lot once you understand how it works. You pr uh, you probably already answered this, but how do you manage finding a job in the comics and game industry if you're kind kind of known for your NFSW work? Well, I don't think I'm that known for NFSW work anyway, but uh, I just keep things separated anyway. Why I'm fine with both, just keeping those separated is the best way, so so there's not too much conflict.
when you do all those thumbnails and inside which will be the piece you move it and paint on a 10k x 5k is this your standard size for painting lately yes for illustration lately yeah but it's it's not 10k uh, 5k though it's uh This is 10k, 5k with the black frame. The actual drawing is about. Uh... Let me see. The actual drawing is about. Computing. Yeah, the the it's about 8k, and uh, yeah, 8k, and 3.5k. So the black frame is just to have like more space to make the the sketch. So I can just like if I need to give a little bit because you know like sometimes it's hard to draw like to guess uh, to 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 guess some part around here and here I make the connection when it ends like this. So having that black frame has, helps me to to give a, a bit more space so I can just construct a bit more around here. So I know what's going on. If you see what I mean, the same for here. See like this one, this line. So I can. Kind of guess like this, it's easier for me. No, I mean, me, I am known for some of my NFSW work. Well, you just need to, uh, to produce more safe work. I would say if you want to work in a, in a safe uh, or work industry. <laughs> Are you playing video games? Uh, lately, not that much. I just bought the uh, 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 Oculus Quest and I played Half Life for Alex. It was good. But I plan on playing Cyberpunk, so maybe I will never draw back again, depending if I like, depending on if I like the game or not. Well, Captain Blue, I think uh, I think if you want, it depends on what you want to work. I mean, you can just work in the NFSW company as well, uh, industry as well. So I don't know. You paint more zoomed out through the process when you suggest paint zoom in. Ooh, this is very. This is a good question and uh, very easy to answer. I, I don't have it. I just zoom and uh, and uh, I, I I just zoom in and zoom out all the time. It's like I'm just like spamming uh, the the zoom and unzoom like this, and uh, all all the time. So uh, so there's no real there's no real uh, time where I just stay like zoom out. Uh, time where I just go zoom in. It's always both at the same time, because I always checked the piece uh, how it looks like uh, and zoom, uh, zoom out, and uh, zoom in. Though I, I have this navigator on the side here, that will tell me, uh, that will tell me uh, like how it works, uh, zoomed out. But I still like doing it. It's just like a, a bad habit of mine, like using the shortcut all the time, because I need my right hand to do something. I think it's just a bad habit. So I think just whatever works, I would say. How long will you stream? Well, I'm going to end the stream very soon. What about your SR in Overwatch? Oh, I just gave up Overwatch. I'm still enjoying Overwatch, but it's taking too much time. I, like when I play video games, uh, competitive video games, I spend too much time playing those and, and I don't draw anymore. So I had to make a choice. But from time to time, I play Overwatch, yeah, for sure. But I don't want to, to sink in again for now. They don't really teach you about NFSW work in industry. Yeah, well, I guess it's taboo or something. So for me, I don't care. So I'm fine. I guess I'm lucky. I don't know. Okay, this is gonna be the last question. So, so if if you have time, can you talk? 
a little bit more about your workspace and Clip Studio. Uh, the workspace it's very I'm changing the workspace actually every six months or three months, I think. Like this workspace right now is really like if you watch my other live streams, it's it's not the same layout and so I just need I just like to play with like try to find the the best workspace possible for me. And uh, right now you can see it, but I'm working on the 27 inch screen. I can show it in, to to you right now. Actually, let me resize everything. See? And right now my workspace is like that small actually right now. And uh, why I'm doing that right now is because like the the my Intuos, like I have my monitor right now here. It's really how deep I go for some 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 stupid stuff sometimes. But uh, like my Intuos is about like here this size like that. It's a large one. And they'd say that this is this is the active area of the Intuos. So what I did right now is that uh, let me take a screenshot actually. This is the screen. So what I did right now is that the size of the active area of here. Is one to one to this window, so this this is the same. Oh, the director. Yeah, it's about this size. The oh, it's about this size here. So I'm like when I'm doing, even though I'm doing an inches, I'm doing at a one to one ratio. So like when I'm doing a, a one inch line is it's on the tablet, it's doing a one inch line on, on the screen as well. And uh, like and from that I'm trying to, I just put the layouts all around it and that's it. I, I'm just trying to be the most efficient possible. And I just use a shortcut to uh, to go from uh, from large like 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 I use one shortcut so I can switch from uh, from like just working on the small area here from the, to, like to uh, like this area, the canvas, and to the whole screen like this. So I just switch with a, sort, a shortcut. It's just, I just found out that uh, working, you know, with like a like a like a, a different ratio. Like if your your ratio was like about this, like this, I just use a lot of details and uh, and uh, and and drawing skill. I would say like uh, I, I I would lose a lot of like uh, mass like how to master the the gesture of the thing. Yeah, that's it. What are the best practice for sharing when you're learning? Let's keep it for the next video. Or the next live stream, I mean. Well, well I, I will try to make a video as well about how to uh, to set up your tablet if you're using an Intuos to have a one-to-one -one ratio. So, so it, so it won't feel like you are, you are like uh, try to you have to adapt too much about uh, the change of size and stuff. Because you have to do a little, a little bit of uh, of math and uh, have to look for the spec of your monitor and stuff like that. So yeah, anyway. I think it's the end of the stream. I did a lot of talking. Yeah, I thought I would do like a one hour or two hours, but I guess it was three hours. But it was kind of messy, so yeah. I maybe I, I, I'm gonna try to plan a little bit better next. But uh, yeah, I don't like planning those stuff. And since uh, since I'm not planning on you know like uh, making money out of it and and or I'm trying to be professional at making videos and stuff, I, I'm just going you know so. Well, yeah, guys, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. I don't know when, but uh, yeah. Bye.